ඉගෙන ගෙන තිබුණා නම් ඔයාට හරිම ලේසි ඕ ලෙවල් ඉංග්‍රීසි සාහිත්‍ය විභාගයට ඒකක් ලබා ගන්න හදිසියවත් ඔයා සිංහලෙන් පමනක් මේ විෂය ලබා ගන්නවා නම් ඊටම අමාරුයි ඕ ලෙවල් ඉංග්‍රීසි සාහිත්‍ය විෂයට ඒකක් ලබා ගන්න ඒ හින්දා සමහර විට මම මේ ක්ලාස් එක කරනකොට දැන් මම තනිකර ඉංග්‍රීසි වලින් ක්ලාස් එක කරන්නේ ඔයාට සමහර තැන් වල නොතේරුණා නම් ඔයාට අවස්ථාවක් තියෙනවා ඔයාට සම්පූර්ණ නිදහස තියෙනවා සිංහලෙන්ම ප්‍රශ්නයක් අහන්න සර් මට මේ දේ තේරුණේ නැහැ අනේ සර් මේක ආයපාරක් පැහැදිලි කරලා දෙන්න පුළුවන්ද කියලා අන්න ඒ අවස්ථාව ඔයගොල්ලන්ට ලබා දෙනවා ඔයගොල්ලෝ මෙහෙට එන්නේ ඉගෙන ගන්න let me switch back to english again the reason that you come to this class is because you want to learn so regardless of the language you have the freedom to ask me um from english or singhali is tamil i am not that good actually but if you insist you can ask me questions in tamil i will try to answer but most preferably singhali is an english will be good right now the reason that we are here the reason that you have taken your time and you have come here is not because javed sir is handsome and javed sir is beautiful you want to look at javed sir no you are here because you want to learn english literature and you want to master the important drama it's a must okay you will definitely be getting this drama in your examination and that is the bear by anton chekhov now there are two dramas one is the twilight of a crane the other one is the bear by anton chekhov twilight of a crane was written by junji kinoshita the bear written by anton chekhov such an easy drama okay even though the drama might be easy and simple to understand you can get 15 marks if you write a clear analysis in your examination you will be able to get 15 marks in your examination uh, the only way that you can get that 15 marks is if you write a clear proper analysis Uh, I will teach you today how to write an analysis about the bear. But before we start writing the analysis, we have to have an idea about the said drama. Now there's a lot of kids here. Some of you might have already read the bear once, twice, three times. You might have done it before. Some of you might not even have heard of this drama. Or do we have a drama called the bear? Ah, it must be about a bear. I think. it must be about a bear in the forest so some of you might have not even touched the drama so regardless i will start from the beginning i will give you a clear understanding about what the drama is what the back story is who the characters are who the uh, who the writer is and what we can learn from the drama not only what we can learn but also how can we write a clear proper analysis um and there is something else i want to tell you right those of you who are who are new to literature those of you who have not um studied literature in your previous grades understand this simple thing okay if you are choosing literature now i had a lecturer i still have a lecturer and even her daughter has taken part in today's seminar um she used to tell me that choosing literature is like getting married okay let me tell that again if you are choosing literature it's like you are getting married for people outside when they see a married person they are like a newly married person they are like amata siri he is married he has everything he is in heaven uh, he has someone to share his feelings with he has someone to be passionate with uh, he also has someone's shoulder to cry on he has someone support right so when you look at a married person newly married person you are like okay that person is living a happy life but the person who gets married they know that they have a lot of responsibilities remember that word responsibilities when you choose literature you have so much responsibilities it's a fun subject javed sir is also a fun teacher i always like to take things in a very cool and a very calm way however you have responsibilities when you learn literature the first thing is you should understand the content you should read the content you have not read the drama but you want to get an a for your examination how can that happen you have a set of responsibilities when you are learning literature okay now i have a, a few uh, engineering friends and uh, when one of my engineering friends asked me um are ah, you are doing liberal arts are ah, you are doing literature my god you are learning about shakespeare so romantic ane 
what she doesn't understand is that when even in, in university, when I learn about literature, when we are writing an analysis, it's like we are doing an open heart surgery. There is nothing romantic when writing the analysis. There is nothing romantic when we are writing synopses or when we are doing assignments in, in university, actually. Uh, in your uh, syllabus, all you have to do is you have to write analysis, that's all. So there is, uh, when you are writing an analysis, there is nothing much romantic about it. But when we are learning literature, there is, uh, there is romance, there is nature, there is conflict, there is society. So many ideas and so much critical thinking is involved in literature for us to learn. So understand that. Understand that when you are learning literature, my friends, you should be responsible, okay? Don't be responsible. Uh, don't think of it as an easy subject. Not really, it's not hard. However, you have to give your weight into literature. Right, saying that, let me share my screen and you will understand the lesson and the content, the criteria that we will be fulfilling in this next three hours. Right here, um, let me first of all share my screen, my friends, all right. Fine. So right here, you see the presentation of the bear by Anton Chekhov. Okay. Now, remember, even though, let me start by giving you a clear understanding about this. Okay. Even though the title is named the bear, you won't find a bear in the drama. Right. A lot of kids who have not read the drama, they are like, sir, where's the bear, sir? Um, I read it like half the way. I have still not seen a bear. There is no bear in the drama. Okay. The title is a bear. The title is the bear. However, there is nothing. It has nothing to do with a bear. Only three characters. Okay. There are only three main characters in this drama. And the events that take place between these three characters are what supplements the bear. Okay. So before we start the reading session and before we start explaining about the bear, there are a few words I want to teach you. Right. Now, obviously, the three words you see on your screen, okay, the three words that you see on your screen uh, might not be familiar to you. You might not have heard of these words. Let me, that is why I'm here, right? I'm here to make things easy for you. Let me explain to you what these words are. Okay. The first word I want to talk about. Now, this is a drama, okay? Remember, it's not a short story. It's not a poem. It's a drama. There's a weight inside of it. Right? Dramas are long. Dramas uh, will take a lot of time to perform, a lot more time to read, and even a longer time to explain. Okay, now dramas are very long. Okay, even in your book, if you take your appreciation book, dramas are the heaviest part in your appreciation book. Apart from that, we have three novels also, right? But you only have to choose one novel. One is uh, The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain. Then we have The Vendor of Sweets by R.K. Narayan. And finally, we have Bringing Tony Home by Tissa Besekar. Let me remind you, I believe that I am the only teacher in Sri Lanka who teaches all three novels. You can choose one class, you can choose one book, or you can choose two books. In the examination, you are only expected to write one analysis about one book, okay? So we have that option also. And still, to this day, I do not know another teacher that teaches all three novels. Why do I teach all three novels? Because I love literature. I love reading. I love diving inside the story. You must learn literature from here, not from here, not from anywhere else, okay? Not from any other part. Learn literature from here then it's very easy for you to write a moving analysis. It's very easy for you to learn the content. If not, literature will be very boring, okay? If you, if you think about literature like you are thinking about maths, literature will be very boring. You should feel literature. Literature is like art. It's like dancing. It's like music, but you must feel it. Now, there are a few hard words on the screen you see now. This word right here, Puta, it's called dialogue, okay? Dialogue. Some kids spell dialogue like this, okay? Without the U-E, some people spell D-I-A-L-O-G, dialogue. That is the this dialogue, okay? Dialogue, the dialogue sim, the dialogue service provider. Thank you, dialogue, for teaching an entire generation uh, how to mess up uh, spelling a dialogue, okay? Spelling the word dialogue. Uh, you spell dialogue like this, okay? D-I-A-L-O-G-U-E. Remember that. I have seen a lot of kids 
I have seen so many kids misspell this word. What is dialogue? Dialogue is when someone, okay, a, a character in a drama, when they say something, okay? Now imagine you and me, we are in a drama, okay? When I say something to you or when I say something to the audience, let me tell you that again, when I say something to you in a drama or when I say something to the audience in the drama, it's known as a dialogue. Very simple, right? Dialogue. In Tamil, you call it vasanam. Vasanam, you call that in Tamil. Um, in Sinhalese, you call it debasak, debas. Uh, you call it debas in Sinhalese. Um, so now there are types of dialogue, okay? There is not only one common type of dialogue, Puta, there are three types. There is three. There are three types of dialogues that you must learn as per our syllabus. Now, this is inside our syllabus. 90%, 90% of what I teach you, I have taken from the teacher's guide. Why have I taken from the teacher's guide? Because if not, you will not be given marks. If you write things from university, if you write things from YouTube, no, you won't get marks. Your content must fill the criteria in the teacher's guide and the marking scheme. Remember that, okay? You are not... Now, a lot of kids, what they want to do is they want to go to literature, the exam. They want to write long essays. Now, sometimes kids will call me on the phone and say, Sir, among other Liu, Sir, Palin, Liu, literature paper. Eh? Sir, your Potawagi paper. Eh? My paper is like a book. But when we get the result, it's a B. Why has that kid got a B for literature? They have written irrelevant content. They have not written the relevant content. They have written something out of, out of the internet, out of university, uh, out of their own thinking. No, 90% you must follow the teacher's guide. Remember that, very important, okay? Teacher's guide, teacher's guide, teacher's guide, marking scheme, marking scheme, marking scheme. If not, you might write a book in your exam, but you will not be getting any marks, my friend. Okay, the first word I want to talk about is monologue. Mono, mono means one. Monologue is when one character has a long dialogue, okay? One character has a long dialogue and that long dialogue can be heard by another character or can be heard by the audience at the same time. Now, when I am talking, I am one character, you are another character. I am talking a long, a long dialogue towards you. That is a monologue. Remember the word monologue. Mono means one. So one person is talking a lot, a long dialogue. That's a monologue. Then we have soliloquy. Okay. Pronounce this properly. Soliloquy. Soliloquy. Some people say solilo-loco. Um, it's not, it's a wrong pronunciation. Soliloquy. Right. Soliloquy is when one person, one character says a dialogue, no one else can hear that dialogue, okay? Now, I am a person in a drama. I am talking a long monologue, an insanely long monologue. No one can hear that monologue. Only the audience can hear that monologue. If you can send me a message through Zoom, um, giving us an example of where you see a soliloquy. You can't find a soliloquy in the bear, but you can find in a different drama. Uh, if you can name the character, those of you who are doing your O-level examination this much, uh, send me a message through Zoom um, telling me who the character is and what the situation, what is the situation where that character had a soliloquy. Now, what is monologue? I have already got around 10 um, message is very good. Um, that's how what that's what I want. I want to see working kids. Kids should be ready to work anytime. So, like I was saying, a monologue is a long dialogue. A soliloquy is when the long dialogue is not heard by the other characters. The soliloquy is only heard by the audience. Okay, long monologue, only the audience can hear it. Now, the other characters are in front of me, but they can't hear what I'm saying. Only the audience can hear what I say. That is known as a soliloquy. That's a literary device. Then, my friend, we have an aside. Okay? An aside is a short soliloquy. Let me tell that again. An aside is a short soliloquy. 
when one character has a short dialogue only the audience can hear let me give you a good example now i am an old man i am talking to a young man in the drama okay now this is a drama now i tell him something and he doesn't understand i look at the audience and i say this bugger is an idiot this bugger is an idiot he doesn't hear me i i am talking in front of him he doesn't hear me the audience can hear me that is an aside it's very short a short soliloquy is known as an aside remember this part remember this slide this is in your syllabus also i got 50 messages we'll see um what they yes you're right the twilight well done sue all of you well done sue from the twilight of a crane has a long soliloquy she is criticizing society she is criticizing um the people who are trying to uh, trap her husband in the twilight of a crane in this we don't have soliloquy but we have a side in this drama we have a side now let's talk about right now let's talk about what the characters uh, who are the characters that supplement the drama all right very simple let's keep on moving forward in such a simple way now we know these three words don't forget these words right in when you are when you are in the uh, seminar sometimes you might be ah okay monologue ah soliloquy okay ah soliloquy aside okay you remember but 5 minutes later you forget when i say what soliloquy when i talk about soliloquy you'll be like what the hell is soliloquy don't forget them hold on to this okay whenever there is an important part i will tell you it's important fine so remember uh, like i said learning literature is like getting married okay when you are looking from outside it's very romantic it's very fun but inside you know there are so much responsibilities sadly i don't have any experience getting married right javed sir is not that handsome not like hilmi sir if i was handsome like hilmi sir then i would have married three or four times by now right <laughs> i'm just kidding um so right now remember the uh, the twilight of a crane apologies the bear by anton chekhov is one of his most infamous plays it was not famous when he was alive but after he passed away anton chekhov being a russian uh, dramatist a russian person who writes dramas okay a russian dramatist when he uh, wrote the twi uh, wrote the bear uh, it was not that famous okay but after he passed away very recently it has been insanely famous there are so many drama adaptations of the bear okay so many drama adaptations you can even find on youtube you can even find the drama on youtube there are so many drama adaptations of the bear my friends right now we call this it's in your syllabus also a farce a farce in one act very important okay if you can now remember in the examination puta when you are writing the analysis in the introduction you must mention this okay the bear by anton chekhov is a farce in one act very simple will you write about anton chekhov no in the introduction of the analysis essay type question known as the analysis you will write a uh, an introduction about the bear only so here now it's a farce in one act remember the word some people say farce farce is also all okay all right but the right pronunciation is farce some people might say some teachers might say farce no problem but it's actually pronounced farce right so it's a farce in one it's a farce in one act but what's a farce now here here is the definition of a farce a farce is a type Uh, of low comedy okay it's a type of low comedy that employs improbable or otherwise ridiculous situations ridiculous humorously stupid ridiculous situations and mix up slapstick and horseplay and crude and even body dialogue so many hard words inside of this don't worry i got you covered javed sir has got you covered here right now what is a farce a farce is a kind of a low comedy it's not a philosophical play it's not like romeo and juliet it's not like the venice of uh, the 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 um, it's not like anything that you um, read of shakespeare right it's not like the merchant of venice it's not a it's not like macbeth a farce is a low comedy okay that has horseplay it's boisterous 
It has slapstick comedy. It's crude and it's bawdy. What is horseplay? Horseplay is where you clown around, where the characters are always jumping up. They are clowning around, usually Sri Lankan comedies. Hands up if you have watched Block and Dino. Block and Dino. There's a, they are burgers, right? They are, they, are, they are burger YouTubers. They do dramas also. Block and Dino. Gehan Block and Dino Kure. Um, there's another guy. I forgot his name. He was very famous. Pusvedilla. Pusvedilla was his famous drama. That's how he became famous. I don't remember his name. My God. I have even spoken to him. I don't remember his name. Um, yeah. Gehan Block and Dino Kure. They have horseplay. Right? They will not give clear acting. They have so much. You know, they're dancing around and... Ah, you bought this from Peta. Ah, okay. Gucci from Peta. That's how they talk. Okay. Uh, that's called horseplay. When you are talking, you have so much, you know, emotion inside your talking. It's called horseplay. Boisterous. Loud. Noisy. Now, Javed sir is boisterous. Um, when I talk, I'm very loud. I'm very noisy. Slapstick. Comedy that is deliberately clumsy. Right? The, the characters are deliberately making mistakes and they are being clumsy. That's called slapstick. These words are very important. My God, please write this in your analysis, okay? In the examination, those of you who are going to the 2020 examination, write these five or six words you'll get. You will get unexpected amount of marks if you can memorize and write these words. Uh, crude. Crude is primitive, basic rudimentary you don't have to be a university professor to learn this drama you can it's very simple very crude it's very basic rudimentary there is no philosophy there is no hidden meaning right it's a very crude drama and body body means there is some adult themes inside of it okay there are some adult themes inside of it okay it's called risque racy but there is no, there is no clear adult themes. People won't be dancing here and there without their clothes. No, no. Uh, it's a hidden meaning. In the hidden meaning, we find some adult themes also. All right. So um, cool. We can, uh, we can give you an example. Okay. I will share my screen again. This time I will share with sound. I will give you an example uh, of a slapstick comedy, a very simple slapstick comedy. Uh, it's not the bear, it's another comedy, but all of these qualities are present. If you want, when you are free, you can uh, watch uh, Block and Dino's, uh, some of their YouTube videos. In that also you'll get that, uh, you'll also get the way that they deliver their dialogue. That is also a farce, a slapstick comedy. Let me show you another example for a farce. Um, if, I hope you can hear the sound. Let me share my screen again with the sound. Yes, there is sound right here. A very short clip. I thought I knew every court here in the province. Have we met? I am visiting my cousin. Who? She's a very lovely cousin. Yes. She's a very lovely cousin to visit. I'm sure, but who is it? Who is it? My cousin. So you're visiting your cousin? Yes. Is she? Yes, of course, the daughter of my aunt. And your aunt, Rick, who is she? Do I know her? Naturally, she is the mother of my cousin. <laughs> I really should meet her. Perhaps she's a friend of my father, the king. I'm sure that you met her. Of course, yes, you met her. Of course, at the thing. Which thing? Tell your 
very glad she came. And tell her that I need to know your cousin's cousin's name. You know my cousin? Yes. In a way like me, she's really rather shy. She sends greetings to the king, and she'll see you at the thing. And she said to say, Henry, there you are. Goodbye. Yeah, all right, all right. I hope you heard that. It's fun. It's, uh, that's called slapstick humor. Right, what you saw in that drama, not serious. There's nothing serious there. There's no pressing issue, right? It's a very carefree, slapstick, purposely funny um, drama. So that is from a different drama, Forever After. That's not the bear, actually. If you want to look at the bear, it's on YouTube. But the dialogue will be a bit different. But don't worry, today we'll be doing a reading session of the bear also. Not the entire drama, but there are a few parts where I want to read of the bear. So you see on your screen, all of these qualities, all of these attributes were found in that drama. Okay, now it was, there was horseplay, there was, it was boisterous, there was slapstick comedy, it was crude, and it was bawdy. All right, let's, uh, let's keep on moving forward, my friends. Right, so here, now the style of the bear, right? What is the style that Anton Chekhov has written the bear in? Now, I have talked about two different kinds of dramas, okay? Not in this seminar, but previously. I have talked about two different types of dramas. There are humorous, and then there is uh, tragedy, okay? There is comedy, and then there is tragedy. The Twilight of a Crane by Junji Kinoshita is a tragedy. In the end, it's a sad ending. But... The Bear by Anton Chekhov, it's a comedy. The entire drama makes you laugh. It's a fun drama to watch. Um, it's interesting because it is funny. And in the end, there is a happy ending. Okay, so that is the style that Anton Chekhov, the dramatist, has written the drama in. Humor is created through the absurd behavior of dialogues. Okay, uh, the drama is saturated with double entendres. Double, double entendre means uh, there's a double meaning, a hidden meaning. He's saying one thing, but there is another hidden meaning inside what he says, right? There's a very sexual meaning. And don't worry, in literature, you should be matured. When we talk about love, when we talk about sex, uh, when we talk about sexual themes, don't write these, okay? Don't write these in the exam. You should not. But when we are learning, we can talk about them, but you should be a bit matured. When I say sex and you start laughing, ah, Javed sir said sex, <laughs> Javed sir said sex. If you start laughing, then you are not matured. These are normal things, okay? These are entirely normal things. Humans do these things, okay? And you and I are all humans. So here, um, the eyes double on tondras, hidden meaning, okay? The character is saying one thing, but inside that, the eyes a hidden thing, okay? Uh, but we don't write that in the exam. In the exam, don't write about that. Uh, because even when you are reading, you will understand, sir, I think there's a hidden meaning inside of this. Yes, there is. Don't write that in the exam. The exam, you should only write the relevant content and you should not write about politics, not about race, not about uh, names of politicians, not about religion. You can't write about religion, okay, in the exam. There are a few parts that you have, a, you can write a bit about religion. For example, you can write about religion in to the evening star. You can write you can write in that a few parts where you can write about conflict and war uh, that that is in a big match 1983. So there are a few exceptions, but most of the time when you are writing your analysis, my friend, kindly do not uh, do not write about anything negative. Don't write don't write about anything. Uh, sexual or anything violent or anything relating to politics or religion. Right, fine. So what else can we uh, talk about the style here? Emotions are exaggerated, right? When someone is happy, they are very happy. When someone is sad, they are very sad. When someone is angry, they are so angry. Okay, that is the exaggeration of emotions. Okay, emotions are exaggerated and they change rapidly. One, someone is angry and the other second, they are happy and then they are sad. So you have to understand this is a drama. This is a parody of life. It's not real life. It's a drama. So there are some things that will not happen in real life. You should be matured enough to accept this. 
The play is a suggestive of emancipation. Emancipation, very important. If you can write this down, please. If you have the tute, okay. But if you can write this down, emancipation, okay, Buddha, is when you are giving equal rights to women. You are saying women are important. Women are equal to men. Uh, but remember, this was written in 1800s. This was written in the 1800s. So think how progressive Anton Chekhov was. In the 1800s, he uh, wrote down a play. He created a drama which gave equal rights to women. Right? Uh, back in the day, 1800s, women were not given equal rights. A woman talked against a man. Like, for example, imagine you ask your wife to go and cook. And she said, no, I can't cook. You give her slap. Patar. This happened very long ago, but nowadays women have the equal rights. Women, they go to jobs. Uh, women are considered equal to women, okay? Uh, most of the time, uh, not, not entirely physically, but mentally and with respect. We give them equal respect. Sometimes when you learn literature, you'll understand that you should give more respect, more value to women compared to men, okay? That is the uh, an ethics that we have in literature. That's fine. So here... Uh, emancipation is when you give equal rights to women. Now, we, are we have talked about a few hard words. We talked about monologue. We talked about soliloquy. Then we talked about asides. We talked about farce. We talked about horseplay, slapstick comedy, boisterous. Now we are talking about emancipation. Only 10 or 20 words, okay? Not more than that. If you can memorize these 10 or 20 words, you can easily write an analysis, my friend. Okay, let's move forward. So remember this word, very important. Emancipation, giving equal rights to women. Women are as e important as men. Progressive and ahead of its time. Remember this, the drama was written in the 1800s, but it is, um, it is progressive. It gives equal rights to women. Only now, only in 2010, 2020, have we started giving equal rights to women that we recognize women to be equal as men. Sometimes you might be against this. Sometimes you might like it, right? Especially Muslim girls. They like the fact that now women are given equal rights. So your ideas are separate. I don't support any of these ideas. I'm only teaching you. Uh, I am only teaching you literature. Okay, after the class is over, don't send me a message saying, ah, you said women are equal to men. Ah, ah come to Kolonna, will you, sir? Ah, come to Debarakota, will you? Don't send me messages like that. The drama says that women are equal to men. Okay, fine. So it's progressive and ahead of its time. It was written in 1800s, but it feels like something written in 2020. Except for a few parts, except for the horses and except for the, um, the kind of language they use. The idea is very progressive. Okay, the setting. What is a setting? Now, in the phone, you have settings, okay? In your phone, you have brightness, you have sound settings. But here, what do we mean by setting? Now, the drama must happen in a place, right? The drama must happen in a physical place, okay? So here, the setting is the atmosphere, the time, the area, the location where the drama takes place. The drama is happening somewhere. That is the setting, my friends. Okay, again, let me tell you. The drama is happening somewhere in a physical place under a few conditions, the atmosphere, the environment, um, the, the laws of that, a that age, ah, that is the setting. Everything that supplements the place where the drama is taking place. Puta, this is a farce in one act. Remember that? This is a farce in one act. What do you mean by one act? The stage will not change, okay? The stage will not change. There is one single stage. But the twilight of a crane, the, the stage is changing over and over again. Sometimes they go out. Sometimes they are inside the house in the twilight of a crane. Sometimes they are in the woods. Sometimes they are under snow. So the setting will change a lot. The axe will change, right? The, the curtain will open and close, open and close. They will change the stage. They'll open the curtain, close the curtain. They will change the stage. But the bear is a one act drama, a farce in one act. What does that mean? The stage will not 
change okay there is one stage furniture will not change only the people will walk here and there and they will talk that's called a farce in one act sometimes there is no curtain usually one act dramas there is no curtains okay if you want you can watch in youtube most of the time people don't have curtains they they are only uh, doing the drama in an open stage remember that a farce in one act all right the main characters belong to the land owning class these are not poor people these are not vagrants megol hingan ne me they are not beggars they are rich people they own land this is post revolutionary russia that means around 200 years ago okay and these are land owning people all of the events take place in the living room of popova's house right uh, the events takes place in the living room of popova's house that is the setting these are the settings okay remember what is setting the physical location where a drama is held okay apart from that the laws the rules the atmosphere the environment the weather okay all of those are um contributing towards the setting now there is no happy accidents when it comes to a drama every single dialogue every single word will supplement the settings now now think um practically can it rain in a drama can it rain in a drama can the people pour water onto the actors in a drama can it snow in the drama no it cannot but the actors can act like that the actors can say my god it's freezing it's snowing isn't it or the the actors can say look how beautiful the rain is there is no rain the actors are acting like there is rain the actors are acting like it's so cold and it's freezing so remember whatever the actor says and does will supplement the setting some parts of the setting you can see the furniture the people their clothes um the objects you can see some parts you can't see the weather the the political atmosphere right the what kind of a law they have in that area okay um apart from that the religious atmosphere so those things you can't see you have to only rely on the acting of the characters but sadly there is no there are no characters to act today and when you are studying it's not like you can bring you can pay money to people to come and act in front of you when you are studying this in school or when you are doing your own studying session at home you must use your imagination okay you need to use your imagination only then will you understand what this drama is only then will you clearly understand what this drama represents my friends all right so again remember this is the setting uh, memorize this okay you can use this when you are writing the analysis all right only three main characters okay only three main characters nothing uh, nothing so much complicated here right first we have elena popova that's a woman a lady she is the wife of nikolai mihalovich okay remember his name nikolai or if you want remember nikolai mihalovich so here look how we spell his name there is an i also mihalovich um and her name you can just say popova don't have to say her entire name you can say popova or elena popova then we have smirnov smirnov is another character um apparently um popova's husband okay when he was alive now when we start reading you'll understand this when popova's husband was alive he had taken a loan he had taken some money from smirnov and smirnov approaches popova to ask her the money back then we have luka luka is an age is an age footman he is an old butler or he is an old um, in this case he is an old servant but what is a footman or a butler they are not like ordinary servant they are not like a matya kiyanna matya are gedara tu gan no they are not like that servant okay these are respected servants they go to school they go to a, now butlers they have a butler school now butler for example if you know batman uh, hands up if you know batman bruce wayne the batman if you have seen the movies uh, the dark knight uh, the batman begins or if you have read the comics yeah most of you know batman has a butler the butler's name is alfred 
batman will be dressed like a normal person alfred will be dressed in a suit and a tie or sometimes a bow is very respected alfred he's a servant but he's not like the toilet cleaning servant right he is a respected person luca is a footman a footman is somewhat similar to a butler he has a uniform he's respected uh, you can't be like i ado luca come and come and clean this hey come and come and polish my shoe hey luca you can't be like that he should be a respected person that is the meaning of a footman okay these are the three characters elena popova smirnov and then we have luca popova luca smirnov popova luca smirnov popova had a husband now he's setpochi now he's dead his name is nikolai mihalovich right um fine then we have characterization okay or the physical features of these characters we will not track this a lot don't worry we will go to the reading session and then we'll come back okay uh, we have characterization the physical features of the characters uh, is in is in a minimum you can't find a lot of features they have not described the entire attire of the characters but when we read this we can imagine how they are dressed in okay and i have even given you an artwork right so this is how the characters are usually dressed in this is how they act right um the there are three characters but here i have only used two of them right so um here when we talk about the characterization when we talk about how the characters look like we don't have much of a big idea how they look like we have to use our imagination popova is a widow who is a bit beautiful she has dimples on her face dimples you know like you, some girls when they smile they have this dimples on their face so she has dimples on her face um apart from that she has beautiful eyes the beautiful the most beautiful quality of a girl is her eyes if she has beautiful eyes then she is considered to be beautiful i don't know about anything else boys will be like ah no sir the eyes are not important sir if we have known i i believe the most important and the most beautiful uh, opening of a girl is her eyes right smirnov smirnov is a middle aged man he is a bit of an old not old but he is not that young also he is not podian he is not an uncle he is somewhere middle in between of that luca is an aged footman he is old but he is respected he is a good uh, he is a uh, loyal servant okay he is like a father figure a little bit of a father figure for popova like popova's dada like popova's appachi tatti vapa is like popova's father okay um yes now let me take you towards the reading session let's read a bit okay not not everything let's take a small break and let's read the drama so i can give you a better understanding we'll come back okay we'll come back to the presentation i want to give you a bit of a an idea about what we are going to read today right so let me take out adobe let me take out the uh, the pdf reader all right fine we are here the bear by anton chekhov okay such a beautiful drama <clears throat> i will try to uh, do my maximum when it comes to reading this when it comes to delivering this to you right -o. so here elena ivanova popova a land owning little widow with dimples on her cheeks these are the characters gregory Stepanovich Smirnov, a middle-aged landowner. Then we have Luca, Popova's aged footman. Footman is a butler, a high-ranking servant. Now they are in the drawing room. Drawing room is the guest room where you uh, invite guests. Now, if you're a rich person, right? Now, usually I'm a humble person. We have living rooms, we have bedrooms, we have bathrooms, right? So, but if you're a rich person, you have a separate room. for your guests right when they enter you have a place for them to sit not your not your living room your drawing room is a separate area where you have your guests after that you will take them into your living room and after that you will take them into your bedroom if you want okay now popova is in deep mourning she's crying and now she's sad she's in deep mourning as her eyes fixed on a photograph her eyes is now fixed on a photograph of her late husband she is looking at a photograph of her late husband and luca is haranguing her he is trying to change her mind 
haranguing pronounce this word with me haranguing haranguing not harassing haranguing that means he is trying to change her mind it isn't right madam you're just destroying yourself the maid and the cook have gone off fruit picking Every living being is rejoicing. Even the cat understands how to enjoy herself and walks about in the yard catching midgets. Only you sit in this room all day as if this was a convent and don't take any pleasure. Yes, really. I reckon it's a whole year that you haven't left this house. Now, what does Luca say? A few hard words here. Madam, you are inside this house. Hammer William may gather at the new wine. You are inside this house. The other people, look at this. The maid and the cook have gone fruit picking. Okay, I told you there is some hidden meanings here. Don't write about that. But the maid and the cook have gone fruit picking. That, that's what you say in Sinhalese. They have gone fruit picking. Uh, and every living being is rejoicing. Rejoicing means they are having fun. Rejoicing. They are, they are spending their time happily. Even the cat understands. Even the cat can understand how to have fun. It is catching midgets. Uh, uh, midgets are kind of a fly, a kind of a winged fly. It's a big, okay? It's, it's very big, a size of like a butterfly, but it's a kind of a fly. A midgets, catching midgets. Only you sit in this room all day as if this was a convent. As if this was a convent. What is the technique? If you can send me a message. If something is like another thing, okay? If something is like another thing, let me, um, uh, yes, uh, as if this was a convent, okay? Right here. As if this was a convent, this right here. The technique, my friend, is known as a, yes, some of you have sent me a messages also. The technique is known as a simile, okay? As if this was a convent. One thing is like another thing. One thing is as another thing. That's a simile, okay? Uh, let me write that also. Some kids will miss the spelling. Simile. Simile. Simile, right? One thing is like another thing. You are indirectly comparing these things. You are like my mother. He is rich like a king. He is, she is beautiful as a model, right? She walks like a queen. Those are similes. Singhalese, you say upamava. Upamava. Then we have rupaka. Rupaka is metaphor. Those of you who are doing in sing, who are inclined in Sinhala medium, simile is known as upamava. You all of you should know this, okay? Why? All of you are going to write an exam in Sinhala. Sinhalese exam is very hard, okay? In Sinhalese exam, you have literature also. So these literary devices can be translated into Sinhala. All of you should know this, unless you are doing Tamil literature. If you are doing Sinhala literature, you should know these words. Upamava, Rupakaya, Simili. In this case, it's called a Simili. And don't take any pleasure. Yes, really, I reckon, I think, I understand. It's a whole year that you haven't left the house. She has not left the house for an entire year. Let's see the reason why she has not left her house. I shall never go out. Why should I? My life is already at an end. He is in his grave and I have buried myself between four walls. We are both dead. Right. What does Popova say? He is dead. He is in his grave. Who is in his grave? Her husband. Her husband is in, her, in his grave. Her husband is Setapochi. That means Popova is a widow. What do? Look at the do. Widow. Popova lost her husband. And I have buried myself between four walls. She has buried herself. This is visual imagery. She has not really buried herself. Metaphorically, she has buried herself inside four walls. She will not go out. This is a metaphor, by the way. Visual imagery plus metaphor. Buried myself between four walls. We are both dead. A lot of uh, devices are used here. It can be hyperbole. It can be um, metaphor also. Now, if you don't know these devices, um, we will talk about these in my class. Now, those of you who are attending my classes, you know how to use literary devices. Some people will say hyperbole. Hyperbole. No, it's hyperbole. 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 No, it's hyperbole. It's not like a bowl. It's like a dusra. Now, Hilmi sir might know. 
uh, back in the day, bowlers like they have their own kind of bowling. I don't remember the name of the cricketer when we were kids in in the in two thousands and nineties. Um, there's a kind of a ball called dusra, right? Uh, the uh, there was a uh, a very famous ball. So hyper ball is like something like that in my head. Hyper ball, a very powerful ball. No, but here uh, hyperbole. Hyperbole is the meaning when you are taking something small and you are exaggerating it. I bet you some kids might have thought it's pronounced hyperbole. Some some teachers they say hyperbole, but not really. Hyperbole is the right pronunciation. When you are taking something small and making it big, is she really dead? We are both dead. No, she's not. She's using hyperbole. It's like she's dead. I am hungry to eat a horse. I can eat a horse. Will you feed me a horse? No, I'm using hyperbole. Well, there you are. Nikolai Mihalovich is dead. Well, it's the will of God and may his soul rest in peace. You've mourned him and quite right, but you can't go on weeping and wearing and moaning forever. My old woman died too when her time came. Well, I grieved over her. I wept for a month and that's enough for her. But if I've got to weep for a whole age, well, the old woman isn't worth it. There are some words here. You've moaned him. You have cried over his death. When someone passes away, we are mourning, right? In, in Tamil movies, you see women are like, you know, ay, ay, oh, my, my husband is dead. Like, you know, they, they're, like, they're panicking and they are mourning. In Tamil movies, Opari Vekre, have you heard of it? Uh, in, in Tamil movies, hands up if you have seen it. In Tamil movies, when a rich person dies, his wives and his sisters, his mother, everyone, they come yelling and they come, right? So that is also mourning. But here, Popova is not mourning. Yeah, around 200 kids know this. Popova is not moaning out loud. She is moaning in silence, right? She is uh, feeling sad. She is depressed because she has lost her husband and she has been there for almost one year. And there are rhyming words. Weeping, wearing, moaning, weeping, crying. Okay, crying, weeping. Okay, wearing, feeling tired, getting, uh, feeling sad and then getting tired. So depressed, now she feels tired, wearing. And then mourning. Mourning is also a kind of a uh, mourning. I talked about this. She is feeling sad because of her husband has passed away. Weeping, my friend, there is a technique here. When you use a technique for a sound effect, okay? Now, for example, let's say bark. Um, let's say cry. Boom, bang. The word doesn't have a meaning unless you give it a sound. It's called onomatopoeia. Right. Onomatopoeia, very hard to spell. That's why when I spelled this, I was very silent. This is how you spell onomatopoeia. Hard to pronounce also. Onomatopoeia, right? A sound device falls under auditory imagery falls under auditory imagery a sound device onomatopoeia is a sound effect boom bang whoosh zip dishum those are onomatopoeia weeping is also onomatopoeia remember these words R write this down if you want uh, we will be talking more about these words in our class. So it's not too late. You can join the family. You can join our classes. It's on Saturdays and Sundays. I believe Hilmi sir had uh, showed you how to join our class. So it's another reminder. You can learn better than this. You can learn these with tutes if you are, if you have joined our class. Forever, my old woman died too. Now his old woman, his, not his mother, his wife. His old woman, his wife died too when her time came. Now he grieved over her. Grieved is also onomatopoeia. He cried over her. He was so sad. He grieved over her. Wept for a month. Cried again, another word for crying. Wept for a month and that's enough for her. But if I got to weep for a whole age, whole age means a long period of time, 100 years, 200 years. Uh, the ice age, right? Or the age of the emperor, a long time. For a whole age, well, the old woman is not worth it. 
Huh. You've got all your neighbors. You've forgotten all of your neighbors. You don't go anywhere and you see nobody. We live, so to speak, like spiders and never see the light. The mice have eaten my livery. It isn't as if there were no good people around for the district's full of them. There's a regiment quartered at Ribloff and the officers are such beauties. You can never gaze your fill at them. And every Friday there's a ball at the camp and every day the soldiers band plays. Ah, my lady, you've young, you are young and beautiful with roses in your cheeks. If you only took a little pleasure Beauty won't last long, you know. In 10 years time, you'll want to be a peahen among the officers, but they won't look at you. It will be too late. What is this? Such a long dialogue, my God, such a long dialogue. What is it called? A very long dialogue in literature is called a what a log, a monologue. Remember, a long dialogue by one character is known as a monologue. What is he saying? You've forgotten all of your neighbors. You don't go anywhere. You see nobody. If you can tell me what is the technique here. You see nobody. What is the technique? Those of you who are attending my classes can send me a message. What's the technique? How can you see nobody? If nobody is there, how can I see them? What is the technique? Those of you who are in my classes, send me a message through, uh, uh, through Zoom. You see nobody. How can you see nobody? The technique is known as a, or how about this bittersweet, stupid genius? Two words, right, right I'm getting the messages now, yes. Well done, yes, uh, onomoto, uh, it's actually oxymoron, well done. A lot of you are correct, oxymoron, that's right. It's an oxymoron. How can you see nobody? When I see, I need to see someone, right? How can you see nobody, onomatopoeia? Apart from onomatopoeia, apologies, oxymoron, not onomatopoeia. Apart from oxymoron, there are, there are other examples where we can use actually. The best examples are war is kind. How can war be kind? Can you be kind to someone and commit war? Ah, here, eat, put, eat. You're going to war. You're putting your gun down. Ah. You're giving them to eat in, in war. You're, you're going and you are showing them kindness. War is kind, Stephen Crane. That's a, that's a poem. Huh? That's a poem. War is kind, Stephen Crane. Does it make sense? No, it's an oxymoron. In To the Evening Star, okay, uh, by William Blake, speak silence. How can someone speak silence? And by the way, those of you who gave me the right answer, Right, um, right. We have Fatima, and yes, you're right. Um, yeah, Madi Ak Akif. Yeah, yeah, Amodya. All of you are correct. Okay, some of you say that you can't see my screen. Um, we have um, Sajila. Well done, Umar Ali. Well done. So all of you, a lot of you. Uh, so I, uh, there are there are around I think 50, 50 right answers. Well done. Um, most of you are attending my classes, so well done. I'm very proud of you. Uh, Hail me, sir. Can you see my screen? Uh, Hilmi, sir, are you there? Um, right. Uh, Puta, can you send me a message yeah, whether yeah, you yeah. can see my screen? Uh, yeah, you can, right? Right, fine. I got a message saying that they can't. You can see, can see. You can see. Right, yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. Great, very fine, fine, amazing. Um, right. So like I was saying here, uh, it's an oxymoron. We live to speak like spiders. We are like spiders. One thing is like another thing. What is the technique? One thing is like another thing. It's a simile. We are like spiders. We live, so to speak, like spiders. We are living like spiders in a corner. How do spiders live? You can, can you see spiders walking in the middle of the house, right? Like dogs coming and licking you. No, right? Spiders live in a corner. If the spider is there today, you come next week, the spider will be there in that exact corner. We are living like spiders. Okay. Thank God. Imagine 
you see a spider a giant ass spider somewhere there in the when you are sleeping and at night you wake up the spider is next to you so thank god spiders are not like that if you see them in a corner they'll be there in the corner right the mice have eaten my livery livery means uniform some people will say liver no it's livery or livery but livery is the right pronunciation my uniform the mice have eaten my uniform hyperbole i have been wearing my uniform for so long we are in this house for so long the mice have come and eaten my uniform that means it has been so long since we have gone out the mice have eaten my livery right so again now he talks about some officers in riblof there is a quarter there is a quarter uh, an army base in riblof that's an area in russia now we don't have riblof now they have changed the name there's an area in russia uh, there was an area in russia called riblof so there is a there was a quarter there and there are so many officers there are so many army officers in that quarter so gaze your fill what does this mean gaze your fill gaze your fill means look at them until you feel enough look at something until you feel enough what does he say you can never gaze your fill no matter how much you look at those beautiful those handsome officers uh, now you know people in the army they are very handsome right they are very decently dressed full clean shaved they stand very straight right they have good physiques right like javed sir so uh, <laughs> Uh, these no matter how much you look at these officers it's not enough you can keep on looking at them uh, it is called hyperbole hyperbole this here kochara balwat at even in a hand no matter how much i look at them i don't feel enough i want to keep on looking at them hyperbole what else right so here and every friday there is a ball at the camp right that's cool so now he says that Uh, you want to be a peahen you want to be a peahen a metaphor you want to be a peahen now usually tell me a metaphor um usually when we say one thing is another thing you are a king you are uh, you are a queen right those are metaphors mountain walls walls are mountains mountains are walls metaphor you want to be a peahen who is a what is a peahen the peacocks the female peacock a pe monarake ganu sata peahen so you want to be like a peahen Pe you want to attract people right when when there's a peacock we look at the peacock right it attracts us so you want to be like a peacock metaphor but not like you want to be a peacock amongst the officers you want their attention in 10 years you will not get your attention he is advising her like a father okay he is advising her like a father now popova she is upset with determination popova says i must ask you never to talk to me about it you know that when nikolai mihalovich died life lost all its meaning for me I vowed never to end never to the end of my days cease to wear mourning oh to see the light you hear let his ghost see how well i loved him yes i know it's no secret to have to you that he was often unfair to me cruel and even unfaithful but i shall be true till death and show him how i can love there beyond the grave he will see me as i was before his death now there is something that popova is uh, communicating to uh, luka what is she saying i must ask you never to talk to me about it don't ever talk to me about marrying again don't ever talk to me about marrying another man do you see now actually this can be taken as a negative quality also but in the exam in our teachers guide only talk about the positivity of popova okay only talk about the good things even though her husband has passed away she does not want to let go of her husband okay she wants to show her love for her husband that even though she has his has her husband has passed away she still wants to remember him and she says let him see how faithful i am from his grave even though he is dead let his ghost see how faithful i am even though 
even though often he was unfair to me, cruel and even unfaithful. What does it mean? Sometimes he was unfair. He treated her in an unfair way. He was cruel. He hurt her maybe physically and mentally. He was cruel to her and he was unfaithful. He had connections with other women. Okay, her husband, when he was alive, he had connections with other women. That is what she is talking about here. Instead of talking like that, you ought to go and have a walk in the garden or else order Toby and Giant to be harnessed and then drive out to see some of the neighbors. Okay, now here she says, uh, Luca says that, okay, uh, instead of being so sad all the time, go and take a walk in the garden or get on the two horses, now Toby and Giant, these are horses, okay? Get on these horses, um, uh, harness these horses on the carriage, okay? Harness these horses, harness is what you, how you tie a horse to a carriage, you harness that horse. Harness these horses and then drive out to see some of the neighbors. Now look at this, her neighbors are so far away. She must go on horse carriages if she wants to go see her neighbors. Okay, understand that. She needs to go on horse carriages if she is going to um, see her neighbors. That means uh, around her house. There are so many acres of land. There are so much acres and acres of land around her house. Now, my neighbor, they live across the street. Baltia uh, Visilika, if I get out of my house and go across the street, my neighbor is there. Why, I don't own a huge land. But these people, they own such a vast land around their house, they need to go to their neighbors on what? On horse carriage. Understand that this is supplementing the, what's the word? This dialogue is supplementing the setting. It's supplementing the setting. We can understand, okay, around her house, around Popova's house, there is so much land. Now, to see my neighbor, I will not go on the motorcycle, right? Imagine me taking the key and starting the motorcycle, racing it, going front, and then I have my neighbor. That's it. But she, to visit her neighbor, she must go acres and acres on horse back. Popova says, oh, and she cries. Luca says, madam... Dear madam, what is it? Bless you. You see how much Luca cares about Popova. He was so fond of Toby. He always used to ride on him to the, um, the Kochangins and the Vlosovs. How well he could ride. What grace there was in his figure when he pulled at the reins with all his strength. So do you remember Toby? Toby, tell them to give him an extra feed of oats. He was so fond of Toby. Who was so fond of Toby? Her husband. Her husband, her late husband was so fond of the horse, Toby. He always used to ride on him to the coach again and Vlosovs. These are neighbors. These are family names. So he always used to ride on Toby towards his friends' homes. How well he could ride. What grace there was in his figure when he pulled at the reins with all his strength. Reins. Reins are what you used to pull on the horse, the rope that you tie on the horse's harness. Not Roman reins, that's a different name. Roman reins is a different person. A wrestler like John Cena. This is reins, the reins you used to pull. The horse, you used to control the horse. With all his strength, did you remember? Toby, Toby, tell them to give him an extra feed of oats. When she remembers her husband, who, what was her husband's favorite horse? Toby was her husband's favorite horse. So whenever she remembers about her husband, what will she, what will she be doing? She will ask Luca to feed Toby an extra feed of oats. Give Toby more oats because Toby was my late husband's favorite horse. Luca says, yes, madam. And a bell rings noisily. Noisily, okay, not like 
not like ding dong. It's like prr, it's like very noisily the bell is ringing. Okay, uh, that shows. Now imagine someone wants to enter your house politely. Like imagine someone wants to politely come in. They will like they'll knock on your door like that. But when they want to, when they are in a hurry, when they are angry, they will bang on the door. Right? They will bang on the damn door. That is what is happening here. The bell is ringing noisily. Right. Let's stop the reading session from there. Fine. Let's go back to the. Let's go back to this. Um, uh, the presentation. Okay. Now we are talking about Elena. You have an understanding, right? Now, if you were listening in the first part, we can't talk about all of the techniques. By the way, there are so many techniques to talk about. If we are talking only about the techniques, it will take around three hours to talk only about the techniques. So we will only talk about a few important techniques. Uh, after that. Um, in the end, being we have to talk about how to write an analysis. Okay, we will talk about how to write and analysis. So here, can be deemed the protagonist. So now you know what a protagonist is. The protagonist is the main character in a drama, a movie, a play. Popova is the protagonist. She's widowed. She has lost her husband. Mourning the death of her recently deceased husband. Recently means he died around seven months ago. She is mourning the death of her husband. The husband had died only seven months prior to the events taking place in the drama. The husband has died only seven months before the events uh, that the drama is taking place in. Right. Now, Luca, the aged footman. Now, remember, Luca is like the father figure of Popova. He cares about Popova. He says, okay, Popova, madam, please don't uh, spend your remaining time inside the house. Please try to go out. Find a new man. Find love. Don't be a widow for the rest of your life. Now, he's a footman, a servant in uniform, whose duties are admitting visitors and waiting tables. Remember? Mostly, he will be admitting visitors and waiting tables. He will be uh, serving them food, cleaning their tables, um, and also making people comfortable. Visitors. He's loyal, right? He's very loyal. He advises Popova to stop moaning as she should enjoy life. He says, don't moan, don't cry, don't weep. You are like my daughter. You should enjoy life. You are young. You are beautiful. You should enjoy life. He tries to save her from Smirnoff's insults, right? Apart from that, um, when Smirnoff, now you heard a bell ringing, right? That means a bad, the villain is going to enter. But he is not the antagonist. Don't worry. We can't call him the antagonist, but he is like a negative character. Now, you know, usually uh, when the villain or in a horror movie, when the ghost is going to enter, something bad happens, right? The windows start shaking, shaking. The windows start shaking. Um, the, uh, the, the chandeliers, they move, right? With wind, uh, dust will be blown on your face. So now we know that the bad guy is going to come here. Why? The bell is ringing very loudly, noisily. So when Smirnoff enters, he is not warm. He does not want to talk kindly to Popova. Remember that? So Luca protects Smirnoff from, um, protects Popova from Smirnoff's insults. Then we have our very own Smirnoff, right? He's a lender, a money lender, okay? Whom Popova's husband owes money to. He has given money to many people, right? And Popova's husband owes him some money. He is rude and ill-mannered. He enters the house without a show of courtesy. Now imagine, can I just come into your house? Can I kick your door and say, are they give me a chair, bring me some tea? No, right? I must be very polite. Uh, excuse me, can I? Yeah. Is it okay if I come in? All right. Can I? Yeah, please. I'll, I'll sit down. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like some yeah, tea is good. I'll be very polite, right? Even though I'm your teacher. Can I just come in your house and like kick my leg up and like, are they, this is my, it's like my home? No, right? So he's rude. He does not have that courtesy. He barges in. He yells. He's rude. He's a rude, ill-mannered person. He enters the house without a show of courtesy too and behaves rudely. He's irritable. 
when Popova refuses to pay him, he gets angry and yells at her without any sympathy. He's an irritable person. Right, what else? He's chauvinistic. Remember the word chauvinistic. That means people who think that men are better than women. Women should only be in the kitchen. A woman should listen to what I say. So he's a chauvinistic person. Okay. Um, what is the opposite? Emancipation. Emancipation, that is when we are giving equal rights to women. Chauvinistic is when we are saying men are better than women. Okay, my friends. Right. Um, so what else? Um, finally, he is manipulative. He, when he wants something, he will try to convince you. When he wants money, he will talk only about money. When he wants, now in the end, he falls in love with Popova. He convinces her. In the end, he falls in love with Popova. Spoiler, sorry, spoiler. Um, those of you who have not read this, now you are surprised, right? So he, um, he believes that uh, he has fallen in love with Popova. So he convinces her. He convinces her to fall in love with him. In the end, they have this long kiss. Okay, they have a very long kiss. And she, he has completely changed the mind of Popova. He is manipulative. If he wants something, he will change the mind of the person he wants that thing from. Right. Now let's talk about the first part of the plot. It's a long plot. Okay, a very long plot. Luca coaxes Elena. He is trying to harangue. He is trying to persuade, change Elena's mind to stop being buried between four walls and enjoy life. Popova refuses and intends to prove her love and faithfulness to her deceased husband. How is she going to prove her love to her deceased husband? Can she go to the grave and hug the grave? Anne, I miss you. I want to make children with you. Can she go to the grave and hug that tombstone? No, right? She is going to live her entire life, remaining of her life as a widow. Nevertheless, it is acknowledged that Popova's husband was unfaithful. I mean, we are told that Popova's husband was a sneaky bastard, okay? He had other connections with other women. There's a way of writing this in the exam, okay? Don't write, Popova's husband is a sneaky bastard. He had connections with other women. Jingijika, jingijika, don't write that, okay? There's a way of writing, don't worry. I will show you how to write the analysis also, right here. I will show you how to write an analysis also. So that is a, a, a positive thing that I usually don't teach how to write an analysis in a seminar. I only give you the story. I only give you the plot. But this time, because uh, most of the grade elevens only have a few more months, less than two months for the exam. That's why we wanted to teach you how to write an analysis. So remember, it's very hard, okay, to talk three hours straight to give you so much information in three hours. It's very hard. So you have to bear with me. I have my commitment. Hopefully you will also show me your commitment. Right. Um, fine. Luca remains, reminds Elena that she is still beautiful and young. Now the ringing of the bell announces that Smirnov has come to collect the debt of Elena's husband. Now, the person now Smirnov has entered, like tan ta ta tan. You know, there's a there's a uh, music, something like that, and Smirnov, the villain, is entering the house. Okay, that is what you should remember. You should imagine here. We'll go back to the reading session. Uh, I will give you now. I see some of you have raised your hands. Some of you are raising your hands for so long. Don't worry. We'll give you a, a time. Okay, we'll give you a half time to ask me questions. Don't worry. Right. Thank you for your commitment also. A lot of you want to know uh, some uh, details about it. Uh, uh, details and some doubts about the drama. So don't worry. We will give you your opportunity to ask any question you want. Okay, now Popova. Um, uh, they are, Popova and Luca are reminded about uh, the entrance of uh, Smirnov. Popova is now shaking. Okay, now she's sad. She's uh, uh, shaking. Who's that? Tell them that I receive nobody. Who's that? Tell them I will not entertain any guests. You can't come into my house. I will not receive you if you are a guest. Yes, madam. Now she looks at the photograph. Now she has a 
she has a monologue okay a kind of a long monologue you will see nicholas how i can love and forgive my love will die out with me only when this poor heart will cease to beat <laughs> and aren't you ashamed i am a good and virtuous little wife i've locked myself in and will be true to you till the grave and you aren't you ashamed you bad child you deceived me had rose with me left me alone for weeks on end now she is now talking to um nikolai mihalovich she is talking to her late husband he's dead obviously uh, she is talking to the photograph she says you will see in the future you will understand that how much i love you you will understand how much i care for you how i can love and forgive my love will die only when i stop living only when my heart ceases to beat what's the technique when this poor heart will cease to beat if you are indirectly saying something what is it called if you are indirectly saying something it's known as euphemism euphemism what is an example send me a message if you know an example of where you found euphemism farewell to barn and stack and tree what does he say he doesn't say i killed my brother okay a houseman farewell to barn and stack and tree the narrator doesn't say okay i killed my brother no no maurice lies amongst the hay my knife is by his side what does he say uh, maurice my brother is lying amongst the hay my knife is by his side the blood has not yet dried what is he saying he is saying he indirectly killed maurice another example when this poor heart ceases to beat when this little heart doesn't beat when i die i will stop loving you what now she is saying that indirectly when she dies she will stop loving yes well done yes you're right um, kalindu you're right maurice lies amongst the hay yes uh, someone with a tamil name says that okay they want to eat and come uh, <laughs> can you oh okay all right my god fine fine that's awesome that that is crazy um crazy message yes okay you can go ahead you can have your lunch and come right um should we update our vocabulary definitely definitely update your vocabulary learn these new words have some quality english my brother yeah my brother is a black sheep in my family yeah you're right abdul samad well done my brother is a black sheep in my family that means yes a uh, passed away instead of dying that's right those are all euphemism cool so uh, right fine um now apart from that apart from uh, the euphemism used here what else uh, now she is she is rebuking she is scolding her husband she is saying aren't you ashamed of yourself look at this aren't you ashamed of yourself you are unfaithful but i am now faithful i am in love with you so there is a negative listen here there is a negative uh, part when we are talking about popova this is unnecessary Popova is trying to prove her love for a dead person. She wants to prove that she is right. That's all. Uh, but here, what you should remember here is um, this right here. We can't talk about the negative parts of Popova. We can only talk about the positive parts of Popova. Right. Let me uh, uh, erase the screen here. Fine. Now, Luca says, Madam. Somebody is asking for you. He wants to see you. Popova says, "But didn't you tell him that since the death of my husband, I've stopped receiving? Didn't you tell him since the death of my husband, I have stopped receiving? I will. I am not taking people inside my house since the death of my husband. I did, but he wouldn't even listen. Says that it's a very pressing affair." Luca says, "I told him I, that we won't take people inside, but he says that it's a pressing affair. He says it's a it's a very urgent matter, pressing affair, urgent matter. I do not receive." Now she is being very sassy. Okay, she's saying, "I do not receive." Luca says, 
I told him, but the devil curses and pushes himself right in. He's in the dining room now. Lucas says, I told him, but this devil, the devil, this is a metaphor. He says that Luca, apologies, Luca says that Smirnoff is a devil. The devil curses and pushes himself right in. He's in the dining room now. He is now in the dining room. Understand that? And this talks about the negative qualities of this character known as Smirnoff, right? It talks about the negative qualities of the character known as Smirnoff. Hopefully you understand it, right? Fine. All right. So, um, Papawa says, very well, ask him, him, what manners, what manners in the sense, she says, look at this man's manners, look at this man's manners, what manners. Now, Luca exits, Luca leaves. How these people annoy me. What does he want from me? Why should he disturb my peace? What does this person want from me? I am a peaceful person. Why must they come and disturb my peace? This peace means uh, living peacefully, not, not a peace, right? Living peacefully. Okay, cool. So here, no, I see that I shall have to go into a convent after all. In the end, I need to go into a convent. Now, those of you who are attending, let's say, a Holy Family Convent, St. Paul's Milagiria, you know what a convent is. Not a school. A convent is where nuns, unmarried women uh, who have dedicated their life to Jesus Christ, um, they live in a place known as a convent. Okay, Men are not allowed inside a convent. Men usually are not allowed. So she, she, she says, in the end, it's like I should go to a convent. There are so many men coming here. I'm definitely going to go to a convent, Annie. Yes, into a convent. Yes, into a convent. Now Smirnoff comes in, okay? Smirnoff, the bad guy. You fool! You're too fond of talking? Ass! Now he is, who is he yelling to? He's yelling to Luca. He has never seen Luca. Luca is an old gentleman. He does not respect Luca. What does he say? You fool! You're too fond of talking. Ass! Madam, I have the honor to present to you myself. I am Gregory Stefanovich Smirnov, landowner and retired lieutenant of artillery. I am compelled to disturb you on this very pressuring affair, a very pressing affair. Now he comes and he talks to he talks to Luca in a very rude way. He doesn't show him respect. An old man, a kind man, he doesn't show him respect. But when he sees Popova, he says, Madam, I have the honor to present to you myself. I am Gregory Stefa Stefanovich Smirnov, landowner and retired lieutenant of artillery. I am compelled to disturb you on a very pressing affair. I am here to talk to you about a very important, urgent matter. What do you want? Your late husband, with whom I had the honor of being acquainted, died in my debt for 1,200 rubles on two bills of exchange. As I've got to pay the interests on my mortgage tomorrow, I come to ask you, madam, to pay me the money today. Your husband, your late husband, your Setapochi husband, I had the honor to be his acquaintance. I was a known friend, not a close friend. I was an acquaintance of him. He died in my debt. He had taken 1,200 rubles worth of goods from me and he did not pay me back. So I have to pay a mortgage. What's a mortgage? Housing loan. If you don't pay the mortgage, the bank will take your house. Housing loan, a mortgage. Um, tomorrow, I've come to ask you, madam, to pay me the money today. Please, madam, pay me the money today. Popova says, 1,200. And what was my husband in debt to you for? He used to buy oats from me. So don't you forget to give. Now, she now when he mentions about oats, she remembers about her husband and she remembers about Toby. Don't you forget, Luca, 
to give Toby an extra feed of oats. Now Luca exits, exits, and if Nikolai Mihalovich died in debt to you, then I shall certainly pay you, but you must excuse me today, as I haven't any spare cash. The day after tomorrow, my steward will be back from town and I'll give him instructions to settle your account. But at the moment, I cannot do as you wish. Moreover, it's exactly seven months today since the death of my husband, and I am in a state of mind which absolutely prevents me from giving money matters my attention. Okay, I got some uh, messages here. Right, cool. You're right, Primal. Yes, there is irony here also. Yes, there are. Yes, thank you so much, Shamla. Uh, thank you, Safwan. Thank you, um, Altaf. Yeah, uh, for your yeah for your kind words, Fatima, Rishma, everyone. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, so cool. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks a lot for your support, support, and thanks a lot for giving me your positive comments. So, like I said, we have to use our imagination. You should be able to differentiate between the characters. You should be able to say, uh, have a difference between Luca, have a difference between Popova, have a difference between Smirnov. So that's why I read it like this because I want you to understand the true uh, idea of the drama. So here. Popova says that okay, I don't have enough money. Yeah, yes, yes, uh, Hilmi sir. Yes, sir. Give a small break for the students, like around ten minutes. Yeah, no yes. issue at all, sir. We can. Can no sure no. You can cover up no everything. I you can. Know. I can cover up. Yes, sir. Yeah, some students they are asking me to what do they do they answer prayers and you know. Understood. Understood. I can give ten minutes of a break. Yes. Yeah. So we'll give a ten minute break now. The time is uh, five twenty three. So, like around five, uh, five thirty-three. Uh, um, uh, Javid sir will start. Okay. Definitely, sir. Right. Thank you for your. Uh, sure. Thank you for the time, sir. So you also can have a break. <laughs> <laughs> Understood, sir. All right. Thank you.
जावेद सर यू कैन स्टार्ट द सेशन Yes. Um, all right. We are back again, my friends. Let me start, share my screen. Okay. Cool. So we are back again after our. Wait. Can you see me, by the way, sir? Hilmi, sir. Can you uh, can you see my video? Ah, oh, you can. Right. Cool. Yes, sir. Cool. Right. So, like I was saying, we are back again once again after our break. So, hopefully, you have absorbed the information that I have passed. on towards you like a sponge okay you have to absorb this information like a sponge what you have to understand here is and um, let me thank all of you by the way i had seen so many positive messages from the kids uh, and it's always an honor and a pleasure to be teaching you english literature so i should be thanking you not the other way around so like i was saying you have to absorb all of this information like you are a sponge okay understand that all of the um, characters here yeah, all three of these characters are quite different from each other right they are no they have no identical qualities whatsoever you have to understand that they represent various sides of their own worlds fine so now we are at the point that where smirnov uh, asks uh, popova for the money that her husband owes her or uh, uh, owes him to be honest so popova's husband had uh, taken around 1200 rubles worth of oaths from smirnov and uh, was not able to pay smirnov back so now smirnov is quite angry and he is quite upset because he has to pay a mortgage right smirnov has to pay a mortgage in the following day so he will not be able to pay a mortgage if uh, smirnov uh, if popova is not able to pay smirnov back right so we can uh, continue with the reading session here it will not take so long we can end the seminar uh, by 7 o'clock that's the time i have allocated towards this seminar but in the end of the seminar my friend you will be able to successfully answer an essay type analysis question in your examination there are some literary devices i did not talk about here right because we have to save some time i left out a bit of literary devices but remember you have to uh, learn the story a few of the literary techniques and devices and then you should be inclined to write a flawless clean analysis only then can you get the maximum amount of marks in the examination right let's go back to the reading session here all right now what does popova say uh, say to smirnov she says that okay she will not be able to provide him with the money however she can provide him with the money the day after tomorrow okay he has to pay a mortgage right it's a burning problem he has he has to pay his home mortgage the next day however popova promises to pay him two days later what you should remember here is this is the conflict this is where the problem begins now if in every single story that we learn either a poem either a short story a ballad or a movie there should be some kind of a conflict there should be some kind of a problem if not it will not be interesting or it will not be appealing to the audience right now let me start from here moreover It's exactly seven months today since the death of my husband, and I am in a state of mind which absolutely prevents me from giving money matters my attention. She says that okay, your money matters are not important. I lost my husband exactly seven days before. and i am in a state of mind which if i didn't pay the interest due tomorrow will force me to make a graceful exit from this life feet first take it they'll take my estate what does he say and i am in a state of mind ah you are in a state of mind where you can't pay me my money i am in a state of mind where if i don't pay my interest these people will take my estate away they will take my land away and i will be forced to make a graceful exit from this life 
feet first. This is also euphemism. He is indirectly saying something. What is he saying? He will commit suicide. It's euphemism. Let me write this here. This line that you can see right here is euphemism. It means that he will commit suicide. He will kill himself if he is not able to save his estate and if he is not able to pay the mortgage. It's a euphemism where he is indirectly saying that he will commit suicide. You'll have your money the day after tomorrow. I don't want my money the day after tomorrow. I want it today. You must excuse me. I can't pay you now. And I can't wait till, to, uh, till after tomorrow. Well, what can I do if I haven't the money now? You mean to say you can't pay me? I can't. Hmm. Is that the last word you've got to say? Yes. The last word. The last word. Absolutely your last word. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'll make a note of it. Now he is asking her, is that the last word you want to say? That means you might die after this. Is that the last word you want to say? Is that final? Sometimes it might really be your last word. And thank you so much. I'll make a note of it. And then people want to keep, want me to keep calm. I meet a man on the road and he asks me, why are you always so angry, Gregory Stefanovich? But how on earth am I not to get angry? I want the money desperately. I rode out yesterday early in the morning and called on all my debtors. And not a single one of them paid up. I was just about dead beat. After it all, slept goodness knows, goodness knows where in some inn kept by a Jew with a vodka barrel by my head. At last, I get here 70 versts from home and hope to get something, and I am received by you with a state of mind. How shouldn't I get angry? This is another monologue, okay? This right here is another monologue, a very long dialogue, okay? And what does he say? And then people want me to keep calm. I meet a man on the road and he asks me, why are you so angry, Gregory Stefanovich? But how on earth am I not to get angry? I want the money desperately to save my uh, land, to pay off my mortgage. I rode out yesterday early in the morning and called on my debtors and not a single one of them paid up. I was just about dead beat. I was so tired, dead beat. I was so tired after it all, slept goodness knows where, even I don't know where I slept, in some inn, in some lodge, in some place where people can spend the night, in some inn, kept by a Jew, a Jewish person, a person who is a Jewish religious person, with a vodka barrel by my head, that means I got so drunk, I had a vodka barrel by my head, hyperbole. No one can drink a vodka barrel, okay? You drink around four or five bottles, you're dead. Seriously, your blood alcohol level will increase so much that you get brain damage. You can't drink more than three or four vodka bottles. If someone forces you, I think you can drink around five bottles. Done. After that, you're dead. But here, um, he has slept next to a vodka barrel. He has got so drunk. He didn't know where he slept. He has got so drunk. With a vodka barrel by my head, at last I get here 70 versts. A verst is a way you measure length. Is a uh, unit of measuring length in Russia. 70 versts from home. A verst is around 8 miles, I believe. One eighth of a mile. Apologies. One eighth of a mile. Almost a mile. And hope to get something. And I am received by you with a state of mind. How shouldn't I get angry? I thought I distinctly said my steward will pay you when he returns from town. I didn't come here to your steward, but to you. What the devil, excuse me saying so, have I to do with your steward? 
the conversation is going back and forth we don't have to explain these things it's very simple very self explanatory excuse me sir i am not accustomed to listen to such expressions or such a tone of voice i want to hear no more and she makes a rapid exit she exits from the room she goes inside of the house or she goes to the corner of the stage don't think that she ran away from the stage like the woman i showed you in the beginning don't think that she ran away from the stage not really uh, he she made a rapid exit to the corner of the stage okay well there a state of mind husband died 7 months ago must i pay the interest or mustn't i i ask you must i pay or must i not suppose your husband is dead and you've got a state of mind and nonsense of that sort and your steward's gone away somewhere devil take him what do you do what do you want me to do do you think i can fly away from my creditors in a balloon or what or do you expect me to go and run my head into a brick wall i go to grusdev and he isn't at home yarosovich has hidden himself i had a violent row a violent fight a violent row with kerstin and nearly threw him out the window mazugo has something the matter with his bowels and this woman has a state of mind not one of the swine wants to pay me just because i am too gentle with them because i am a rag just weak wax in their hands i am much too gentle with them right this part right here my friend it's a monologue okay it's a very long it's a very long dialogue here where a uh, smian of is uttering this part right here do you think i can fly away from my creditors in a balloon or do you expect me to go and run my head into a brick wall these are rhetorical questions okay when someone is asking you a question and he does not expect an answer it's a rhetorical question so these are rhetorical questions that he's asking he says that he has lended money to many people he has had many arguments many fights with them this talks more about the negative qualities of this particular character smianov i'm a rag just weak wax in their hand people think i'm weak people think i'm a in singhalese you say sottipal people think that i'm a weak person but no this is a metaphor okay it's a metaphor in the sense i am a rag i am another thing a rag is like a a, a torn cloth a very weak torn cloth a rag just weak wax in their hands weak wax my friend is an alliteration alliteration okay weak wax alliteration is when you find two adjacent words they begin with the same sound weak wax i am too gentle with right so these things you can write these down okay you can always go to youtube and check out the video you can go to the eduzone website and check out this video right if you have any other doubts or you can write this down well just you wait you will find out what i'm like i shan't let you play about with me confound it i shall jolly well stay here until she pays Rah. how angry i am today how angry i am all my inside is quivering with anger i can't even breathe Whew. my word i even feel sick now he says that here i shan't let you play with me i won't let you play games with me who do you think i am confound it remember that okay think about that confound it i shall jolly well i shall happily is using verbal irony this right here i shall jolly well verbal irony okay uh, like i said that these will be talked about in our class verbal irony okay now verbal irony is when what he says the opposite thing he means jolly well means happily but he is not happy okay he is being sarcastic i shall jolly well no i mean he is very angry i shall happily is very angry verbal irony 
I shall jolly well stay here until she pays. How angry I am today, how angry I am. All my insides is quivering, they're shaking, quivering with anger. And I can't even breathe. My word, I even feel sick. Waiter is calling, not the waiter, he's calling Luca. What is it? Get me some quass and water. Uh, quass is a kind of a drink, alcoholic drink, okay? Get me some quass and water. He wants to put the quass inside the water and drink it, right? It's a kind of alcoholic drink like beer. Now, those of you who might have drunk beer, I know there are some boys here who might have definitely, just kidding. A beer will not make you drunk very quickly. So quass is a kind of a, a low alcoholic drink. He's going to drink that with water. He's so upset now. He wants to drink a bit of a quass, a low alcoholic drink. By the way, Smirnoff is a brand of quass. Okay. Smirnoff is a brand of alcohol in Russia. So this is not a coincidence. Uh, Smirnoff is named after a low alcoholic drink in Russia. What a way to reason. A man is in desperate need of his money and she won't pay it because you see, she is not disposed to attend to money matters. That's really silly feminine logic. That's why I never did like and don't like now to have talked to a woman. I'd rather sit on a barrel of gunpowder than talk to a woman. This is hyperbole. I'd rather sit on a barrel of gunpowder. That means, you know, back in the day, gunpowder, if you just hit the gunpowder, it will explode. Okay. If you just hit it, the gunpowder, it will explode. You sit on the barrel of gunpowder, you will be flying. Have you seen in cartoons when there's explosion, the characters will fly, you know, and there's a whistle. <whistles> Something like that. So if he sits on a barrel of gunpowder, he'll be flying and he'll be blown to pieces. So he's using hyperbole. I'd rather sit on a barrel of gunpowder than talk to a woman. He says that it is unnecessary. It is stupid to talk to such stupid women. I'm not saying this. I think women are amazing. Smirnoff. Smirnoff said that, says that women are stupid and uh, it's, way, it's a waste of time to talk with women. Don't be angry at Javed, sir. Be angry at Smirnoff. When you write your analysis, uh, talk about the negative qualities of Smirnoff. Brr. I feel quite chilly and it's all on account of that little bit of fluff. I can't even see one of those poetic creatures from a distance without breaking into a cold sweat out of sheer anger. I can't look at them. Uh, who are little bit of fluff? Little bit of fluff are ah, women. Now he says that women are little bit of fluff. Fluff means a beautiful woman. Like you, they are useless. They are only beauty. They are nothing else. A little bit of fluff. Those poetic creatures, metaphor, he says that women are poetic creatures. For the poem, they are so beautiful. For, for the name, they are beautiful, poetic creatures from a distance without breaking into a cold sweat out of sheer anger. I break into a cold sweat. I sweat even though I am cold because I am angry. When you are afraid and when you are angry, you sweat. Okay, so that is what he's talking about. When I just see a woman, I get so angry. Now he is blaming the entire womankind. Okay, Smirnoff is blaming the entire womankind. Now, um, Luca enters. Madam is ill and will see nobody. Get out! I ill and will see nobody. Now that's all right. You don't see me. I'm going to stay and will sit here till you give me the money. You can be ill for a week if you like. And I'll say I'll stay here for a week. If you, if you are ill for a year, I'll stay here for a year. I'm going to get my own, my dear. You don't get at me with your widow's weed and your dimple cheeks. I know those dimples. He's talking, but understand that um, Popova is not there. He's talking to Popova, but Popova is not there. You can say it's a soliloquy. 
uh, but to be honest, in your syllabus, we don't call this a soliloquy. It's a monologue, okay? Um, so what is he saying here? Uh, if you say you are ill, okay, I'll wait here. I'll wait for a week. No problem. I'll wait for a year. No problem. Until I get my money, I will not move from here. Hyperbole. Hyperbole. I am going to get my own, my dear. You'll, you don't get at me with your widow's weed. Widows, they will wear this head cover. It's called a widow's weed. And their face, they can cover their face also. Don't you try to trick me with your widow's weed and your dimples on your cheeks. Even though you look good, I won't fall for those. And he shouts through the window. Simeon, take them out. We aren't going anywhere at once. I'm staying here. Tell them in the stable to give the horses some oats. You fool. You've let the near horse's leg get tied up in the reins again. Now he's uh, talking to his, uh, his coachman, the man who rode his coach, rode his horse carriage. Simeon, take them out. Take the horses out. We aren't going anywhere at once. I am staying here. Tell them in the stable to give the horses some oats. You fool. Now he's, he's rebuking. He is calling Simeon. He says that. You've let the near horse's leg get tied up in the reins. What are reins? Not Roman reins. These reins are the, uh, the harness, the rope that you tie the harness with. The reins. Again, teasingly. Never mind. I'll give it to you. Uh, I'll give it you. Never mind. Now he goes away from the window. Now he talked. He shouted outside of the window. We can't see what is outside. Because he acted like there is someone outside named Simeon. We know, okay, he talked to, he spoke to Simeon. Oh, it's bad. The heat's frightful. Nobody pays up. I slept badly and on top of everything else, here's a bit of fluff in the morning. In morning, with a state of mind. My head's aching. Shall I have some vodka? What? Uh, yes, yes, I'll, I think I will. Waiter! What is it? A glass of vodka? Now, ugh, Luca exits and he says, Oof. Now he is so tired after yelling, like me, he wants a glass of vodka. Now he sits and inspects himself, okay? He's inspecting himself, he's looking at his dress. I must say I look well, dust all over, boots dirty, unwashed, unkempt straw on my waistcoat. Now, there are some straw also, untidy straws on my waistcoat. The dear lady may well have taken me for a brigand. A brigand is a person uh, who is a thug, a thief. Mankollakarya, uh, a burglar. Um, no, a, um, yeah. Mankollakarya in the sense a person who, um, who is a burglar in the sense they will, a bandit, a bandit really. A person who is a thief, who will, who will uh, make people, who will... Uh, um, Threaten people and take their money. So the woman might have thought I'm a brigand. In the sense, she might have thought I'm a kind of a rogue. I'm dressed like that. I have dust all over my body. My boots are not polished, unwashed, unkempt straw. There is untidy straw on my waistcoat. Straw that you find in the stable. <sighs> it's rather impolite to come into a drawing room in the state... But it can't be helped. I am not here as a visitor, but as the creditor. And there's no dress specifically prescribed for creditors. And Luca enters with the glass of vodka. Okay. You must, you allow yourself to go far, sir. What? I, uh, um, um, nothing. I really, wh whom are you talking to? Shut up.
when he is talking to the yeah, audience yeah, yeah, monologue yeah. soliloquy a sign the devil re hyperbole um, right sir right sir your Come line was not clear cool ah, okay can you hear me now sir uh now okay cool cool right it happens with the wifi router sometimes thank you sir yeah. oh how angry i am so angry that i think i could grind the whole world into dust i even feel sick hyperbole he can take the whole world and grind it into dust he's so angry waiter now popova comes her eyes are downcast sir in my solitude i have grown unaccustomed to the masculine voice and i can't stand shouting i must ask you not to disturb my peace now she comes out and now she is confronting smianov smianov has yelled he has shouted he has cursed he has um he has spoken unkindly to luka the footman and now popova comes and talks with smianov Right, the third part is going to begin now. Let's go back to the presentation. Luca reminds Elena that she is still beautiful and young. We know that, right? So here, yeah. nevertheless, Smirnov enters the dining room without courtesy and confronts Elena. He enters without taking permission. He is very forceful. Elena did not have cash, so she promises to pay Smirnov the day after tomorrow or two days later. Elena also states her mind and um prevents giving her priority to money matters she says that okay i am a bit in trouble i can't give my priority to money matters smirnov refuses to leave in the argument that follows elena calls smirnov a bear hinting on the title of the drama they have an argument now okay now you know where smirnov is smirnov is in the in the living room right is in the drawing room he's in the living room the drawing room is uh, where the um where the um uh, guests are invited to stay inside of the room by the way there is a document called the glossary now this one i have not uploaded okay this one you can get in my class this document right here is the glossary all of the hard words all of the hard words in the lesson you can find in my class in usually in every single lesson whether we are doing a drama whether we are doing a short story a poem and even if we are doing the chapters in the vendor of sweets bringing tony home and even if we are doing a chapter in um, the prince and the pauper by mark twain all of the chapters will be provided with glossaries that you see on your screen right uh, what i want to tell you is you can get these documents we can learn a lot of literature in our classes in my class so you can join the family right so let me show you the let me show you the um class times okay let me talk about the class times you can write this down if you want to join our class you can write this down or you can go to the eduzone website and then you can um uh, note down the class times and you can register for the class you can join the family my friends one moment let's share with right and fine let me just show you how to join um my class right so these are the class times okay and don't worry um we will be covering the entire syllabus for those of you um who are a bit worried i if not i can send you previous recordings also if you have uh, any doubts regarding any lesson uh, yeah so um, like i was saying um this right here there are um one there are novel classes okay we have our novel classes on sundays so if you can take some screenshots or write this down sunday we have a vendor of sweets master class okay uh, if you are if you have registered in my grade 10 or grade 11 revision or theory class then the vendor of sweets class is free actually right apart from that my friend uh, we have this um, we have uh, another class for the prince and the pauper and then we have bringing tony home usually i advise all of my students to join two classes two novel classes one you can do the vendor of sweets then you can choose either the prince and the pauper or bringing tony home the time you can see here we have our vendor of sweets class on sunday 4 o'clock 4 pm in the evening
Then we have the Prince and the Pauper class 6 p.m. in the evening on Sunday. And then we have the Bringing Tony Home class at 8 p.m. in the evening on Sunday. Let me remind you, the only teacher in Sri Lanka that teaches all three novels. Right, then we have our Saturday classes. It begins from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. There's one class, right? That is the grade 10 English literature master class. Uh, you can join this class. Even today, you can join naturally. Today, we have this class. It starts at 7.30, okay? Uh, then we have our grade 11 theory plus and revision paper class. So it's a target paper class. This one begins at nine o'clock. But sometimes, and it's like this, if you pay for the grade 11 class, you can join the grade 10 class for free. And then you can join the vendor of sweets class for free. Without joining these classes, you can only join my novel class. That's also a, uh, an option. But problem is then you won't, you'll only get 15 marks. Even though the novel is long, we will only get 15 marks for the novel. So you have to cover the entire syllabus if you want to get an A for English literature. Very important. You can do an HND in a government approved campus if you have an A or B for literature. Very important. Um, so, like I said, hopefully I will see you in my Saturday or Sunday classes. These are the times. So, Saturday we have a class today, 7.30, begins at 7.30. Uh, and then we have another class, begins at 9. Sometimes the class will go until 12 o'clock midnight, okay? Sometimes, not every day, uh, because uh, we have to cover the syllabus and we, are, we do analysis every single week. We do an analysis. So, um, we have to cover the class. Um, that's why we have to, we sometimes do the class until 12 o'clock in the middle of the night. The kids who join my class, they are very motivated. They work very hard. Like I said, if you have chosen literature, you have so much responsibilities. It's not a, it's a fun subject, but you have to learn how to write um, analysis. You have to learn literary techniques. You have to understand the value of literature from your heart. Okay, so Sorry, these sir. are the times. Uh, yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, when is your, not the paper class, when is your theory class for new students, grade 11? Um, it's, it's right here, sir. This is the theory class for grade 11. This right here. Theory. Okay, you have mentioned a paper class, no? no yeah, right? it's a revision uh, plus target paper class and also uh, the ICE theory. It's, uh, it, they theory all also. Ah, so uh, great, new grade 11 students, they can join this class, no? Exactly, sir. Yeah, grade There's 10 students. Also. That's right. Okay. Thank you for that question, by the way. Yes, uh, we also uh, do theory in the grade 11 class also. It's mentioned revision plus target paper class, but also we do uh, we do theory also. And by the way, grade 11 students can join the grade 10 theory class, the theory plus class for free. Okay, so if you have joined the grade 11 class, you can join the grade 10 class for free also. We have that option. Uh, so we will master English literature. Uh, we will basically... Uh, make a slave of English literature. You should not be afraid. You should not look at it as a burden. You should look at this as a, um, as a gift and as, some, as a way for you to improve your English communication. Your written and your spoken English will also improve if you are doing English literature. A lot of people say, I am very fluent in English. Like they, people say, Javed sir is very fluent. He has his own style of English. The reason is I am an English literature teacher. I read books. I consume, I absorb, I digest knowledge of English literature. That's why my English, my spoken and my written English are so good. Right, we can uh, go back towards our um, seminar. Right? It, sir. So this, uh, yes, sir. Another thing, you are also doing an English class, no? Can you inform the students also that some students, they are asked me to yeah, yeah. Definitely, sir, right. And apart, right, so thank you, sir. Apart from that, uh, we are also doing an English class, online English class. Um, it's on Wednesdays, okay? So it begins from uh, 4 to um, 6. There's the grade 10 class. And then we have from 6 to 8. That's the grade 11 class. Apart from that, we have another class for 2020. Um, all level students, okay? Those of you who are expecting to face your um, examination on March, we have a separate class for you. Let me show you that also. That's a separate account actually. Right. Um, let me show you that also. So those of you who want to learn English, right? You can be English medium or you can be Sinhala medium. Doesn't matter. We will use both languages in my English language class. Right. So like I was saying, there are 
three different classes here, right? One is the grade 11 English, English language class, okay, 2021, uh, theory, revision, and target questions. So this is on Wednesdays, okay? This is on Wednesdays from um, six, apologies, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., okay? This is one class. Then we have our grade 10, 2021 um, theory class, okay? Theory plus class. This is at five o'clock, okay? Five o'clock Wednesdays, you can join this class. And apart from that, especially for those children who are hoping to face the O-level examination this March, 2020 grade 11 pupils, you can join this class right here, okay? Um, uh, this is uh, this starts from nine o'clock and we will continue until 12 o'clock midnight. Everything you need to know regarding your English examination paper. If you want an A for your English language, then you can join this class. We started this only this year. OK, we only started this class this year. Uh, so you are not late. You can uh, join this class and you can excel in your English grading. You can find this under Sinhala medium. OK, this if you go to the website, you'll understand. Literature is under English medium. Um, English language is under Singhala medium. If you are Singhala medium or English medium, you can join my class. You can um, learn about English grammar, English um, language. Uh, you can learn about various uh, vocabulary and we will be doing past papers to supplement our grading in the O-level examination. Thank you, Hilmi sir, for um, reminding me about this also. Um, so you have two options. One, if you are doing English literature, you can join my literature class. Or if you or one of your friends uh, wants to get an A for English language, you can join my English language class. I hope we are clear. Then we can continue our seminar. Right. Fine. So here... Elena did not have cash, so she promises to pay Smirnoff the day after tomorrow or two days later. Elena also states her mind and prevents giving her priority to money matters. She says, no, I will not give uh, my priority to money matters. Smirnoff refuses to leave, uh, and in the argument that follows, Elena calls Smirnoff a bear, hinting on the title of the drama. Smirnoff challenges Elena to defend her feminine rights in a format of a duel, a gun duel. Both of them are expected to fire at each other in far ranges. So they were, he wants to have a duel with um, Popova, right? Because Popova calls him a bear. She says that you are a boor, you are a bear, uh, you, are a, uh, you are a savage. She uh, scolds or she rebukes Smirnoff. So Smirnoff gets angry and he challenges her to a duel. Elena accepts, even though she's a woman, because she believes in equal rights for women. She's, uh, she's emancipated. This is a scene where, which, emanci which emancipates um, women. It's a scene of emancipation. So here, what Popova does is she accepts the challenge. She says, okay, I will accept your challenge. And Smirnoff is surprised by her boldness. Now, usually when a man asks a woman to fight, she will not want to fight with him. But here, she accepts the challenge. She wants to fight with him. He confuses. Right. And apart from that, he falls in love with her. He confesses his love to her. And even then, she will not be willing to back down from the challenge. Even though he confesses his love to her, she says, no, I will not fall in love with you. I want to fight you. This is a duel, by the way. The argument that follows ends in Smirnoff kissing Popova passionately. In the end, both of them kiss each other passionately. The play ends with Luca and some workers armed with household weapons entering to break the duel. That's the end of the drama, right? So uh, this is basically... In the end, there are some literary techniques, not much, but a very important few, okay? Uh, humor is created by absurd behavior and dialogues. Metaphor, right? Popova, is, Popova calls me enough a bear. That's a metaphor. Incongruity and contrast. It's also known as juxtaposition. Incongruity means there is conflict, no peace. And there is contrast. It's known as juxtaposition. They are, the dramatist is... Uh, juxtaposing, he is comparing the difference between uh, Smirnoff and Popova. What kind of differences that their characters have? Violence 
and love are juxtaposed at the end of the play, right? Violence means uh, the, the need to want to fight and kill each other. And then we have love. These are juxtaposed, right? In the sense, they are compared and contrasted. Suspense. The argument between Popova and Smirnov brings about, ten, brings about a tense situation, right? Such a simple drama, such a simple explanation. The most important part, however, my friend, is the analysis part, okay? The analysis part is the most important um, session here. We will do the analysis, but before that, um, let's uh, end the reading part here, okay? Pay me the money and I'll go. I told you perfectly plainly. I haven't any money to spare. Wait until the day after tomorrow. Now, perfectly plainly, alliteration, okay? Adjacent words begin with the same sound. Perfectly plainly. And I told you perfectly plainly. I don't want the money the day after tomorrow, but today. If you don't pay me today, I'll have to hang myself tomorrow. But what can I do if you haven't got the money? You're so strange. Then you won't pay me now, eh? I can't. In that case, I stay here and shall wait until I get it. <clears throat> You're going to pay me the day after tomorrow? Very well. I'll stay here until the day after tomorrow. I'll sit here all the time. I ask you, have I got to pay the interest tomorrow or haven't I? Or do you think I'm doing this for a joke? Please, don't shout. This isn't a stable. Now she says that this is not a horse stable. You're acting like a horse. This isn't a stable. I wasn't asking you about a stable but whether I got my interest to pay tomorrow or not. You don't know how to behave before women. No, I do not. I do know how to behave before women. No, you don't. You're a rude, ill-bred man. Decent, decent people don't talk to women like that. Now she says, you're a rude, ill-bred man. Your mother and father have not made you in a proper way. They have done something wrong and they have made you. You're an ill-bred man. In Sinhalese, we say, Jataketa Bainua. Jataketa Bainua. Ill-bred man. What a business. How do you want me to talk to you? In French? Or what? Madam, je vous prie. How happy I am that you don't pay me. Ah, pardon, I have disturbed you. Such lovely weather today. And how well you look in mourning. By the way, Jivos prayer. Jivos prayer is a French word. Those of you who are doing French might know this. Uh, please, please, madam, please. Madam, Jivos prayer. How happy I am that you don't pay me. He's using verbal irony verbal irony or sarcasm okay we will talk about this in our class but mostly verbal irony means what you say the opposite thing you mean imagine you have a friend called fatima during quarantine fatima has eaten so much now she is double fatima you say adeye fatima you look so thin ane you've gotten beautiful ane fatima's face is covered in pimples my god fatima your skin looks so good you are using verbal irony, also can be known as sarcasm, but in our syllabus, we say verbal irony, okay? Or you can say irony, if you don't remember, say irony. What he says, he means the opposite. How happy I am that, you've, that you don't pay me? Ah, pardon, I have disturbed you. Such lovely weather today, and how well you look in mourning. He bows also. That's silly and rude. Now, there's a long, my God, it's a long monologue, okay? Silly and rude. I don't know how to behave before women. Madam, in my time, I've seen more women than you've seen sparrows. Three times I've fought duels on account of women. I've refused 12 women and nine have refused me. Yes. There was a time when I played the fool, centered myself. 
using honeyed words, wore jewelry, made beautiful bows. I used to love to suffer, to sigh at the moon, to get sour, to thaw, to freeze. I used to love passionately, madly, every blessed way, devil take me. I used to chatter like a magpie about emancipation and wash and wasted half my wealth on tender feelings. But now you must excuse me. You want to get round me like that? Now I've had enough. Black eyes, passionate eyes, ruby lips, dimple cheeks. The moon whispers timid breathing. I wouldn't give a bra's farthing for a lot for the lot, madam. Present company always expected. All women, great or little, are insincere. Crooked, backbiters, envious, liars to the marrow of their bones. Vain, trivial, merciless, unreasonable. And as far as this is concerned, such a long monologue. Now it's good if you can memorize this monologue, okay? Don't write, don't extract the entire monologue, but... Uh, if you can memorize monologues like this, go back and find the monologues, memorize them. They will help you write the analysis. Today we are writing an analysis. You have to stay here until 7 o'clock. After that, um, we will set you free. Um, here, now he uses, he says, I've seen more women than you've seen sparrows. Hyperbole. I have seen more women in my life. I have been with more women in my life than you have seen the birds known as sparrows. Three times I have fought duels on accounts of women. He talks about his experience with women. He used honeyed words. He used beautiful words back in the day. He wore jewelry. He made beautiful bows. He used to love to suffer, to sigh at the moon. He's talking about the experience he had when he was in love. Um, to get sour, to thaw. Thaw means freezing means becoming ice. Thaw means... Um, when the ice becomes water again, so he froze, he thawed, right? He used to love passionately, madly, every blessed way. He has done so many things, okay? He's, a, he's such a game car, and, okay? He has done so many things in life. I uh, don't need to mention this in the exam, but remember, he has had so much experience with women. I used to chatter like a magpie, chatter like a magpie, that's a simile about emancipation, giving equal rights to women, and wasted half my wealth on tender feelings. But now, you must excuse me. You won't get round me like that now. I am not that idiot anymore. I am not that idiot anymore. Back in the day, I used to spend half my wealth for women. But now, I am not an idiot like that, madam. I've had enough. Black eyes, passionate eyes, um, ruby lips. These are metaphors, okay? Ruby lips. What, what are ruby? Not the theater ruby. Ruby means um, a kind of a diamond, a kind of a red diamond. Ruby lips. Dimpled cheeks. The moon whispers timid breathing. Now he's talking about the experience he had in when he was in love. But now he says, I won't give a brass Farting, I don't even care. Brass farting. Tamba satayak wat vati namata. Not even a cent. Not even a brass farting for the lot. Madam, present company always expected all women, great or little, old women, young women are insincere, crooked, backbiters, envious, liars, and to the marrow. They are such liars that their flesh is made of lies. To the marrow, to the inside of their bones, they are liars. They are envious. They are jealous people. Backbiters. They, they will talk your negative things when you are not there. They will gossip about you. Crooked. Not doing things directly. Indirectly, they will do wrong things. Insincere. They are not sincere. Now he taps his forehead along the monologue. Okay, a very long monologue. 
Excuse my outspokenness. A sparrow can give 10 points to any philosopher in petticoats you like to name. You look at one of those poetic creatures, all muslin and eternal demigoddess. You have a million transports of joy and you look into her soul and see a common crocodile. Excuse me, excuse my outspokenness. I might have talked something wrong, excuse my outspokenness, a sparrow can give 10 points to any philosopher. A philosopher can get an idea by looking at a sparrow. But a woman can't. A woman cannot. These poetic creatures, he calls women to be poetic creatures. They are creatures who are only beautiful in poems. They are imaginary creatures, not real. They are not sincere. They are sincere. Their sincerity, their kindness are only poetic. These poetic creatures, all muslin and eternal demigoddess. Muslin is a kind of a cotton cloth, a very a precious cotton cloth. And these are eternal demigoddesses. Uh, that means they are gods. They are half gods. These are all metaphors. You have a million transports of joy. There are million ways to get joy out of a woman. True story. And you look into her soul and you see a common crocodile. Even though you might be able to get a million ways of joy from a woman. If you look into her soul, she's a common crocodile. You can't trust women. I didn't say this. Smirnoff says it. He grips the back of his chair and the chair creaks and breaks. But the most disgusting thing of all this is that crocodile, for some reason or other, imagines that its chief diver, is privilege and monopoly, is its tender feelings, right? A chief diver means most important thing. That is, the, that is another French word, most important thing. It's privilege and it's monopoly. Monopoly is when a business controls the market. So women have a monopoly. They are controlling men. Women think that their most important thing is their tender feeling. Why confound it? Hang me on that nail feet upwards if you like. But have you met a woman who can love anybody except a lapdog? Rhetorical question. Have you met a woman who can love anybody except a lapdog? When she's in love, can she do anything but snivel and slobber? Snivel means um, uh, make noises from her nose, like snivel. Snivel and slobber. Slobber is, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Saliva. Make saliva come out of your mouth. Slobber. So he's talking about the things women do. So women only can... Uh, make snorting sounds, can only cry, and they only can put saliva out of their mouth. That's all women can do, snivel and slobber. While a man is suffering and making sacrifices, all her love expresses itself in her playing about with her scarf and trying to hook him more finely by the nose or the noose. Uh, here, nose means sometimes she might be trying to hook him from his nose, like a bull, or he might be talking about a noose, N double O S E. Noose is the what you use to hang someone. So women are able to control men. That's what he's saying. It might sound complicated, but what he's saying is women are able to control men. Tell me truthfully, have you ever seen a woman who was sincere, faithful, and constant? Have you? You haven't only freaks, ugly women, freaks. Ugly women and old women are faithful and constant. You'll meet a cat with a horn or a white woodcock sooner than a constant woman. You can't find a constant woman. He is using hyperbole. It's easy to find a cat with a horn or a white woodcock. A white woodcock is a kind of a bird that is mostly brown or black. You can easily meet a white woodcock or a um, or in this case, you can um, meet a uh, cat with a horn than meeting a, in this case, than meeting a sincere woman. He is condemning all the women in the world. That is another negative part of Smirnoff. Right. The reading session will be over very quickly. Right. So um, the other parts don't have um, long monologues, right? Uh, 
smear uh, popova has a small monologue here that is all after that the reading session is over then we can learn about how to write an analysis <laughs> weeds one moment wait uh, right i hear then according to you who is faithful and constant in love is it the man yes the man the man men are faithful and constant <laughs> in love what an idea what right have you to talk like that men are faithful and constant since we are talking about it i'll tell you that of all the men i knew and no the best was my late husband i loved him passionately with all my being as only a young and imaginative woman can love i gave him my youth my happiness my life my fortune i breathed in him i worshiped him as if were as if i were a heathen and and what then this best of men shamelessly deceives me at every step after his death i found in his desk a whole drawer full of love letters and when he was alive it's an awful thing to remember he used to leave me alone for weeks at a time and make love to other women and betray me before my very eyes he wasted my money and made fun of my feelings and in spite of all that i loved him and was true to him and not only that but now that he is dead i am still true and constant to his memory i have shut myself forever within these four walls and will wear these weeds to the very end very simple okay nothing to nothing too complicated here she says that even her husband even though her husband was unfaithful to her he had connections with other women she did not care she still loves him even though he is he has passed away she is sincere she is using herself as an example we will not take too much time to explain this part here we are running out of time we have to do an analysis ha <laughs> weeds i don't understand what you take me for as if i don't know why you wear that black domino and bury yourself between four walls i should say i did it is so mysterious so poetic when some junker or some tame poet goes past your windows he'll think there lives the mysterious tamara who for the love of her husband buried herself between four walls we know these games ah don't you lie popova i know you're only pretending you want to attract men that is why you are pretending to be that be a widow then people who pass your window will say ah look at that tamara by the way this is illusion okay one moment illusion illusion is when uh, you use literary work from a different piece of literature okay is when you use literary work from a different piece of literature tamara is another poem it's another love poem that chekhov has used here to talk about women in that poem they talk about the beauty of women that women are so precious so perfect so uh, this is illusion if you can send me a message where other literary uh, lessons in our syllabus uses allusion if you can uh, there is a, there are a few places where allusion is used some poems a short story let's see i have a message here yes abdu um, yes you are well done mohammed shumay and abdul rashid abyankar well done yes the hobbit from the wave well done lot of you uh, those of you who are uh, who are attending my classes well done um, i still remember uh the uh, the camel's hump yes well done the camel's hump to the evening star also uses um sakuni well done to the evening star also uses illusion okay that's right so for the love of her husband buried herself between four walls we know those games what how dare you say all that to me you may have buried yourself alive but you haven't forgotten to powder your face are ah, you 
You don't have a husband, but you're still wearing makeup. How dare you speak to me like that? Please, don't shout. I am not your steward. You must allow me to call things by their real names. I am not a woman, and I am used to saying what I think straight out. Don't you shout either. Smirnov says to Popova, I'm a man, I can shout. You don't shout at me, uh, Popova. I am not shouting. It's you. Please leave me alone. Pay me my money and I'll go. I shan't give you any money. Oh, no, you will. I shan't give you a farthing just to spite you. You leave me alone. I have not the pleasure of being either your husband or your fiance. So please don't make uh, scenes. I'm not your husband, not your fiance. Uh, don't, don't create a problem here. I won't show you mercy. Um, irony. Situational irony. He says, I'm not your husband, but in the end, he becomes her husband. Okay. Situational irony. Okay. Situational irony. What he expects. Right, and by the way, uh, some uh, you might have sent me some messages in Tamil also. I'm sorry, I can't read Tamil that well. I pro I, I'm sorry, um, Fatima um, Sumeya, I, I can't understand what you have written here in Tamil. Uh, if you can, uh, send it to me in English or Sinhalese, okay? Cool. Situational irony. What he expects, the opposite thing happens. He did not expect to be her husband. At this point, in the end, he becomes her husband. I don't like it. So you sit down. I do. I ask you to go away. Give me my money. Oh, how angry. How angry I am. How angry I am. I don't want to talk to impudent scoundrels. Get out of this. Aren't you going? No. 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 Very well, then. Luca, show this gentleman out. Would you mind going out, sir, as you are asked to? You needn't. Shut up. Who are you talking to? I'll chop you into pieces. He threatens Luca, okay? So nothing to explain here. What happens, you can imagine. Little fathers, what people? Oh, I'm ill. I'm ill. I can't breathe. Where's the Shah? The Shah? The Shah? Pleasure? The Shah? Oh, they've all gone out to pick fruit. There's nobody at home. I'm ill. Water? Get out of this now. Can't you be more polite? You're a boor, a chorus bear, a bourbon, a monster. This is where the, the title, the bear, came from. So until now, some of you might have been looking for the bear. Here's the bear. Smirnoff is the bear. He's acting like a bear. What? What did you say? I said you are a bear, a monster. May I ask you what right you have to insult me? And suppose I am insulting you. Do you think I am afraid of you? And do you think that just because you are a poetic creature, just because you are a woman, you can insult me with impunity? Ah, well, we'll fight it out. Little fathers, what people? Water. Pistols. You don't, don't you think? Do you think I'm afraid of you just because you have large fists and a bull's throat? Hey, you bourbon. We'll fight it out. I'm not going to be insulted by anybody. And I don't care if you're a woman or one of the softer sex. Uh, remember, softer sex means inferior gender. Gender that is under males, softer sex, not the other meaning, okay? Some of you are softer sex. No, this means inferior gender. Bear, bear, bear. It's about time we got rid of the prejudice, uh, prejudice 
that only men need pay for their insults prejudice that means uh, a kind of a belief without any proof prejudice a kind of a traditional belief prejudice it's in my glossary also if you want you can see here uh, prejudice should be somewhere here should be somewhere obviously here ah, prejudice okay here um, perceiving that um, something is uh, very important without experiencing it uh, uh, believing that something traditionally believing that something is important prejudice that only men need pay for their insults they will take it if you want equality of rights you can have it we are going to fight it out with pistols very well this is a very minute this very minute my husband has some pistols i'll bring them here mm. what pleasure it will give me to put a bullet in your thick head devil take you i'll bring her down like a chicken i am not a little boy or a sentimental puppy i don't care about this softer sex look at the words he uses softer sex common crocodile um he uses the word tamara uh, he used other words also poetic creature to address women so look how much he is insulting women gracious little fathers have pity on a poor old man and go away from here you frightened her to death and now you want to shoot her if she fights well that's equality of rights emancipation and all that here is the sexes are equal i'll shoot her on principle i'll shoot her because what i believe in on principle she is not he is not going to shoot her principle p a l principle means her beliefs on my and her beliefs i will shoot her why men and women are equal but what a woman devil take you i'll put a bullet in your thick head hey how she reddened how her cheeks shone she accepted my challenge my word it's the first time in my life that i have seen go away sir and i'll always pray to god for you she is a woman that's the sort i can understand a real woman not a sour faced jelly bag but fire gunpowder a rocket i'm even sorry to have to kill her dear dear sir do go away i absolutely like her absolutely even though her cheeks are dimpled i like her i am almost ready to let this death go i am not angry any longer wonderful woman can you see smianov is now falling in love with popova popova is not here luka is afraid he is dead scared and smianov is trying to uh, he's fallen in love with popova hmm here are the pistols but before we fight you must show me how to fire i've never held a pistol in my hands before uh using hyperbole she has pistols in her hand now but she says i have never held a pistol in my hand before oh lord have mercy and save her i'll go and find the coachman and and the gardener why has this infliction come upon us you see uh, there are several sorts of pistols there are more timer pistols specially made for duels and they are fire and they fire precaution cap uh these are smith and wesson revolvers triple action with extractors these are excellent pistols they can't cost less than 90 rubles the pair you must hold the revolver like this okay now he's showing her how to use a gun do you see there's an iron here right a bit of a bit of satire he wants to kill her but he's showing her how to use the gun he could have actually showed her you should use the gun like this or like this but he's showing her how to properly use the gun aside her eyes what an inspiring woman repetition her eyes her eyes like this yes like this then you cock the trigger and take aim like this put your head back a little hold your arm out properly like that then you press this thing with your finger and that's all 
The great thing is to keep cool and aim steadily. Try not to jerk your arm. Jerk your arm. Take your arm back. Very well. It's inconvenient to shoot in a room. Let's go into the garden. Come along then. But I warn you, I will fire to the air. I am going to fire in the air. I will not shoot you. I will shoot the sky. That's the last straw. Why? Because, because it's my affair. Are you afraid? Yes. Ah, oh, no, sir, you don't get out of this. You come with me. I shan't have any pleasure. Peace until I've made a hole in your forehead, that forehead which I hate so much. Are you afraid? Yes, I am afraid. You lie. You won't. Why won't you fight? Because, because, because I like you. Ha! Huh. He likes me. He dares to say that he likes me. That's the way. Let's go. Let's kill each other. Popova says, let's go. Let's kill each other. Right, almost done, by the way. Um, uh, a few more minutes and it will be done. Uh, the, the part uh, will end here. Only five more minutes after that we can end our session here. Very little to read here. Okay. And after that, I will give you an understanding about the analysis by before seven. The, uh, the session will be over, okay? 15 more minutes, the session will be over. Right. That's the way. Let's go there. Follow me. Let's go to the garden and kill each other. Loads the revolver in silence. And takes his cap and goes to the door. There he stops for half a minute while they look at each other in silence. Then he hesitatingly approaches Popova. Uh, this is the moment you all been waiting for. Watch the drama. Drama is on YouTube. Much more fun than this. Well, is it my fault I like you? And he snatches the back of the chair and the chair creaks and breaks. Devil take it, how I'm smashing up your furniture. I like you. Do you understand? I, I almost love you. Get away from me. I hate you. God, what a woman. I've never in my life seen one like her. I'm lost, done for, fallen into a mouse trap like a mouse. Uh, this is a simile. Okay. Stand back or I'll fire. Fire then. You can't understand what happiness it would be to die before those beautiful eyes. He's giving her Manamala talk, right? He's giving her Manamala talk. Think and make up your mind at once because if I go out, we shall never see each other again. Decide now. I am a landowner of respectable character. Have an income of 10,000 a year. I can put a bullet through a coin trust in the air as it comes down. I own some fine houses. Will you be my wife? Now he is proposing to her. Okay, now he is proposing to her. Right. Fine. Uh, yes. Um, now she shakes the revolver. Let's fight. Let's go out. I'm mad. I understand nothing. Waiter, water, let's go and fight. I'm, I'm off my head. I'm in love like a boy, like a fool. I love you. I love you as I've never loved before. I've refused 12, 12 women. Nine have refused me, but I never loved one of them as I love you. I'm weak, I'm wax, I've melted. I'm on my knees like a fool offering you my hand. Shame, shame, I haven't been in love for five years. I'd taken a wow and now all of a sudden I'm in love like a fish out of water. I offer you my hand, yes or no? You don't want me? Very well. Stop. Well, nothing. Go away. No, 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 stop. No, no, go away. Go away. I hate you. Oh, oh, no, don't go away. Oh, if you knew how angry I am, how angry I am. And now she throws the revolver on the table. My fingers have swollen because of this. What are you waiting for? Get out. Goodbye. 
Yes, yes, go away. Where are you going? Stop. No, go away. How angry I am. Don't come near me. I don't come near me. How angry I am with myself. I'm in love like a student. I've been on my knees. I love you. What do you want to fall in love with? Uh, what do I want to fall in love with you for? Tomorrow I've got to pay the interest and being moving and begin mowing and hear you. I shall never forgive myself for this. Get away from me. Take your hands away. I hate you. Let's go and fight. And now uh, Popova and Smirnov has a, has a huge, a long kiss. Okay, now Smirnov kisses Popova. He's not like forcing her. She's also willing and she's also kissing him. Right, and here, Luca with an axe and the gardener with a rake and the coachman with a pitchfork and workman with, with poles, they enter, okay? Luca sees them kissing and he says, little fathers, Luca, Tell them in the stable that Toby isn't to have any oats at all today. And now it is the end, okay? The curtain is closed and that's it. The reading session is done, okay? Uh, give me only 10 more minutes. I'll end this session now. Um, right. So I hope you understood majority of it. If not, uh, because obviously it's impossible, right? To end a complete drama in three hours, right? Let me take you towards the towards the analysis, okay? This right here you see is the analysis, right? There is a method called the plug method, okay? That's a method I will teach you in the class. Uh, this analysis has been uploaded onto the website. You can go to the EduZone website, register, then you can download this analysis. Uh, there are three past paper questions I have talked about, right? One, 2016 ordinary level examination, discuss the significance of the title of the play, the bear referring to the events of the play. How is the bear significant or relevant to the title? You can find the example analysis here. Okay. So before, usually, before we write an analysis, there is something called the pre-analysis. We are using a structure and we are writing our analysis following that structure. Here you see there are some um, important quotations to memorize. I told him, but the devil curses and pushes himself right in. He's in the dining room now. Uh, quotations like this, you have to memorize, okay? Now there is a long analysis, right? There is an introduction. Then we find various mechanisms to use when we are writing the analysis. If you meet me in my class every Saturdays uh, and Sundays, you can definitely um, master how to write an analysis. I hope the session was entertaining. Uh, we, because me and Hilmi sir have a class in the evening, right? Hilmi sir's class begins at seven o'clock. My class begins at 7.30. So we have to wrap up today. So make sure you read the content, make sure you memorize these before you go to the exam, especially if you are doing your exam on March. Um, so Hilmi sir, can, is it okay if we end our session then? Uh, yes, yeah, sir, we can end our sessions. Students, if you have right, any, fine, uh, you so any uh, yeah. Students, if you have any doubts regarding how to join the classes, what you can do, okay, this is my WhatsApp number 077-555-4262. So drop me a message in the WhatsApp, okay? So if I didn't read me, you can give me a call to this number. I'll inform you how to join the class. This is my WhatsApp number. Drop me a message to my WhatsApp. And same time, uh, if you want to make any payments for you or any subjects, okay, like for an example, if you want to pay for literature means, okay, uh, okay, sorry, uh, below the website, you have a account number. So if you want to how to register those kind of things, if you want more details, what you can do, Baba, you can drop me a message, Baba. So I'll help you to uh, join the classes of literature. Okay, so we'll finish the class. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and good night.